Welcome to the Safety Third Podcast. It's a very special edition. I think I say that every single time. We have um, a medical professional who's going to help us cure all of our ailments, which, boy, by God. Actually, Nigel's Oh, here. man, you don't me, know what you Kevin, just walked into. Yeah. Hallelujah. Free Nigel's medical the one who care. always complains about his ailments. And, yeah, and but now he he's going to... Gonna... He already gets free medical care. Yeah, but he doesn't use it because he's stupid. <laughs> <laughs> he's not even here and we're already making fun of him <laughs> uh, we have chubby emu do you do you share your name with people i mean you can find it online bernard bernard that is that is a name i've i've only ever met one other bernard in my entire life and they were and, like 80 uh, no no he, were, yeah, uh, he, he, it was in high school it was in high school and then he ended up going to jail for drugs so i'm like okay mm. cool. Good for him. <laughs> Plastic, but i mean you bernard, deal with drugs on a regular bernard, basis yeah. too not too dissimilar yeah it's uh it, it's it's interesting um i i was actually before doing this i was going to record a video about like some of the chubby emu stuff that i can't make because it'd be too edgy for youtube um because you know when you're in the hospital like you just see the craziest stuff oh, going right. on all the time so yeah like yeah. and it's like I, I've been sitting here. on some of these well, cases. Well, like, this isn't since YouTube, so you can, you can. Oh, it's not YouTube. It. No, this is YouTube. Well, I mean, it is. Well, but it's it's not it YouTube. is, but also you can say whatever you want yeah. here. This is can our podcast where we say yeah. bad words. Yeah, like get, get it out. Poop. Yeah. Okay. And Fuck. cum. Poop. <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah, that's a good one. Shit. <laughs> ass. Did you know, cum spelled backwards is fuck. Nice. Very good. You, Very good. <laughs> I'm like, I'm really thinking about this, and it just, I'm the puzzle is not coming together. Because <laughs> it's just when you you, you turn it around, right? It's get, the letters go the other way. Hmm, this I is just, a symptom. You can you can log this for Alan when you just diagnose him later. Well, we need to get uh, Justin Wang on here. Speaking uh, of cum and, and jars. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that guy. On Twitter, uh, just the stuff that pops Who's up. Who's this on my guy? Timeline. Do I want to know? Justin Wang? You don't know Justin Wang? My Twitter timeline is, gets destroyed. I don't by either, Mr. but Wang. I'm just glad that Kevin brought it up first. I didn't want to look this like This guy I didn't that. Know. Justin Wang? Yeah. W H A N G. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, he's he's uh, he's acted in two of my videos. I remember because it was like, I, I like reached out to him and I drove up from DC to New York to like have him in the video. Um, one of one of which is actually a case I wasn't sure if I wanted to do at first because it was a it was actually a homeless dude who was who like drank fifty beers every day for a long time. Oh my god, that's legendary. Yeah, yeah that makes me feel a lot better. <laughs> is this another YouTuber? I feel like I'm confusing it with somebody else. Wang, like Justin Wang exclamation point. Wait, am I... what does he have to do with jars? Oh yeah, wait. So he he, he, he makes Twitter he has a series called Tales from the Internet. And uh, there's a tale from the internet of a cum jar with a My Little I mean, Pony I, figurine inside. I know inside. about that one. I didn't oh, know yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Like, like, I, was, I was spelling his name wrong when I was searching it. It's, it's uh, Wang. There's an H W-H-A-N-G. Yeah, I, I searched Wang, how, like, you oh. phonetically. And, and it was Twitter, like a ukulele player. The Twitter gave me nothing. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, this guy, he fills my time. Like, I, there's, I, there, I think it's just uh, occasionally just, like, borderline <laughs> on my twitter timeline because he's like read retweets i feel like it's uh, he's just trolling um everyone that follows oh it's him. great it's, it's like some of the best stuff on twitter yeah like here uh, here's a here's a post i'm just gonna share this in the yeah where's the porn <laughs> the that we know to no, not it's, look it's at. just it's just like <laughs> here look all right <laughs> oh like my this, god <laughs> Wait, what? i'm like on twitter i'm like what is that who do i follow that's like we, retweeting is this oh, thing that you try and like describe in in words to the people who can't see this or yeah i mean you could try your best uh okay uh so it uh Safe. It's, a, it's, a, it's a twitter post, post of, lol my grandpa is the best <laughs> and um, it, it appears to be a, 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 a man of as old as a grandpa. And his face is um, it's, it's on a, a woman. All right. That's good. Perfect. That's where you body. end. That's where you end the description. Yeah. It's not. Yeah, no, it's. You uh, got to describe it like your mom's in the room listening to you. Yeah. <laughs> that's I the mean, challenge. Yeah, pretty, pretty much. I think she listens to all these. <sighs> yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh oh twitter timeline is oh, anyways oh yeah back to free medical advice 
Yeah, um, yeah. Hey, I can't I give medical thing. advice on the internet. Just saying. what if it is? What kind of really is that a law? Uh, well, I mean, I I could I could I could get fucked over pretty hard if I do. So I like. Oh, I'm not, as in like, some you gave someone advice and it was like wrong or something in the country. yeah. Like I mean, it's like then are you liable for some? I, I'm I'm not gonna put that on me. So. What yeah. if you begin the statement? What if you say something, but you begin the sentence with allegedly? Right, like I am not yeah. your doctor. Like, hypothetically. But... <laughs> yeah, like allegedly uh, th this disease will turn your dick inside out or something. I don't know. <laughs> well, so a lot of times I'll get messages, like either emails or like Instagram DMs, and people are like asking me like, hey, my sister's in the hospital. Like this is what they're doing or, or whatever. And like in those kinds of cases, I'd be like, this is probably what they're doing. Like I'm not 100% sure because like I'm not – in like the direct care of your sister. So I don't know a hundred percent, but uh, aside from that, I can't be like, oh, this is exactly the medicine that you need to take. Like that, that's a no, no. And like, right. or, or even, or even just go and say like, oh, you absolutely have, you know, this disease. And I'm just like, yeah, I can't do that. So, yes, okay. so you have what are your micro penis itis. <laughs> and this is what are hold up. Hold up one of these when, like, after you're done talking, just be like, an wait, is that a butthole? Oh, yeah. No, it's an yeah. asterisk. It's, it's okay. an asterisk. Yeah. It's a puckered butthole was the first thought that I had for some reason. <laughs> None so of allegedly, what is your opinion on ivermectin? Oh, there we go. Here, here's a good one. Um, allegedly. Allegedly. Why this is, not why is the deep state keeping uh, ivermectin away from <laughs> God. Wait, is like, that why, why is it? Yeah, you guys, you guys are eating your own video, by the way. <laughs> We're used to it. Why is it that liberals only care about horses? Because those are the only yeah. things that oh, they yeah. give ivermectin to. Why is that? Hey, so so there's a reason why my Twitter is like my all just shit posts and memes now. So it's like because somebody somebody had told me that there was like like just weird things like bot accounts that were following me like right around the pandemic starting. Cause it's like, I made a couple like virus videos. And so like, and that was like April of 2020. And so somebody had tipped me off that like, Hey, like some of these accounts, they're like, they're watching you pretty close. And I'm like, all right, well then now I can just start shit posting. And so like for the last, I don't know, almost two years at this point, it's just been like memes and shit posts, <laughs> like all on my Twitter. Cause it's like, Hey, you, you bots want to follow me. Well, you're going to, you're going to see a lot of good stuff from me. Like that's, that's what I, you wanted, right? Yeah. I think babies also... when they see the most corrosive bathroom cleaner in the cabinet. It's just a guy chugging. a. a it's Badlands chugs. Juice. Oh yeah. I, I got to yeah, get yeah, him yeah, in yeah. one oh, of yeah, my I know videos. That guy. Yeah. There's something about like, po like kind of shit posting like that. Like it's sort of, I feel like it provides, I'm not a lawyer, but like this sort of defensible, like credibility thing where it's like, well, it's not like all serious. Like clearly there's like a lot of information in here that is not meant to be taken seriously, you know, cause if it's just sort of purely like medical or science related, people will be like, oh, like, well, they're posting it as if it's advice. But then if you sort of see a lot of shit posts as well, it's kind of like, well, <laughs> Yeah, recontextualizes it a bit. Right, the, right. I mean, the downside is that then people take you less seriously because it's like, you know. Oh, the, that's better that way, though. You don't, yeah, want, I, yeah. just, you don't want people to take you seriously. Don't raise the bar. Well, here's, it, so here's, here's the thing. So like I was, I haven't made this video on like my second or third channel. Um, but, but that actually is like a problem, like, because I still work full time, right? And so like mm. amongst my colleagues, like. Among us? that's right yeah am amongst my do. professional wow. colleagues you like have a job where you sort of have to be taken seriously that's right, right. <laughs> and so like uh, amongst my professional colleagues like whenever like if youtube ever gets mentioned like they they always brush it off and it's like you know well if you're talking to a couple million people like you can't really brush that off but yet they always do and it's like it, and it also doesn't help that they're all like 20 plus years older so right that's oh yeah. Me, uh, help me check my email. What, what channel is your show first on? Thing, well, the first thing you gotta do is turn your computer on. <laughs> 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 yeah, but but yeah, the the taken seriously part, uh, it it is kind of like I mean that is like one downside because it's like sometimes I I do need to like say something for real and then if it's just like ha ha glug glug or you know that kind of stuff and it's like oh okay cool I guess. <laughs> yeah, I mean, are you talking oh, like God. online or? Yeah. Have you ever uh, had a patient that knew who you were? Uh, well, no, um, and that's just because I haven't said anything. So yeah, that's that's I, funny. Uh, that's like the meme you just posted on Twitter, ending up in a chubby emu video. 
Oh yeah. Ending up as yeah. one of his patients. I mean, oh, I don't know. I feel like at the end of the day, though, it's just like it's two separate things. Like it doesn't matter. It's like one is sort of you know like a side thing, and the other is like a serious job. And it's like I don't know why people think it matters that you do something outside of it. as long as you do a good job with the professional stuff. Like who gives a crap? about yeah and the other thing too is like patient advocacy so like uh i had a video earlier this year about a guy who had kidney cancer at like 25 years old Hmm. and like it's a very rare kidney cancer that happens in sickle cell trait which is what he had um and like the patient advocacy part of that like i i did put some memes in there uh because it was like you know how do you how do you teach students right Mm -hmm. so like i'll teach at the medical schools i'll teach at like pharmacy and nursing schools and so like when you when you do that, like y- you got to tell a story of a person because too many times, like when you lecture in schools like that, it's just like talking about data, right? And mm. other things and like everyone just tunes out. And so it's like, at least at the school that I taught at, a lot of times it was virtual, right? So there was like a separate campus for like rural medicine and then also urban medicine because they had like two programs. It was like, twin programs but like unified under one university um and it was like the the people at the satellite campuses almost never showed up and it was just they're like well we can just watch the lecture online like why would like why do i have to wake up at eight o'clock right so there was always uh that element to it Uh, is urban and is it kind of like uh one one like side gets taught like gunshot wounds the other one gets taught like getting kicked in the head with a horse <laughs> with a horse <laughs> yeah, well so i got my horse i mean the horse <laughs> the well so the implications are different i mean farming accidents are brutal like i mean it, yeah. like, i think i'd rather get shot than be like just like ripped in half by a tractor or yeah, like or... degloved anywhere with a trap by a tractor right yeah, like okay. some of the industrial machinery or like getting impaled by spikes that like would otherwise ha- otherwise have like a cow's head on top. Like, oh, <laughs> yeah, I, m- I mean, farming, farming stuff is brutal. Wow. And then also the chemicals that they use too. like some of it's like some of it's pretty toxic. I mean, they have the safety precautions in place. So like for the most part, like farmhands are OK, so long as they comply with like whatever's going on with the chemicals that they're using. But like that happens. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, And urban urban medicine is is like just a completely different animal because it's like you have so many people. And and like that's why a lot of times like I get accused of saying like people are like, oh, this this is fake. No one's ever going to do that. And it's like, well, if you're in a city or in a state that has like nine million people like cramped into this tiny little area or like you have like, I don't know, six million people in your metro area, like you're going to see people do things that are just like there's a, a guy on YouTube the wall. who cemented his head into a microwave so did he die that sounds like no something that would that's kill. I'm, just, I'm just saying no. if there's a guy who cemented his head into a microwave i'm pretty sure you could find a guy who ate an entire bottle of gummy vitamins <laughs> <laughs> yo i remember when that happened so so the thing is like uh in the video i i put it in there that he was from a different country so he was actually from africa and oh, I, I thought so that was like, super interesting because it's like they didn't really speak English that well. So like they, they know, legit like, thought that well. things coming oh in bottles, it was just God. America was just nicer that way. Oh, oh yeah. Wow. And so, yeah, just eating like a shit ton of these vitamins that were in uh, uh, gummies in the bottle. And like they legit thought it was like, oh, wow, everything really is so nice in America. And it's like, wh- no, 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 those those are vitamins. Wow. But, was, but they didn't know because they didn't one. speak. Yes, yeah, uh, a boy ate 150 gummy vitamins. Oh God! What yeah. was the vitamin responsible for his demise? Vitamin almost? A. Yeah, that'll get okay. you. That's why you can't eat vitamin polar bear livers. Yep. That's why you can't eat a whole bottle of gummy vitamins, I guess, huh? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's not just one bottle, too. I mean, it was for like, uh, like it was more than a month that he was just like eating them like oh, candy. God. Oh, so healthy. Where did he get all of these? They're expensive. <laughs> yeah. So, so what does vitamin A do? So vitamin A causes hepatotoxicity. Um, so it actually causes like fat buildup in the liver. Um, but also like when you're eating like multivitamins like that, there's also the vitamin D, which is also like a fat soluble vitamin. So what it does is it impairs the, yeah, it, it, um, it messes with the calcium absorption in the body. And so when that balance is screwed up, uh, he came in with like a broken arm, but like when we evaluated him more, we also found that like he had liver damage. And that was from the vitamin A that he was just consuming left and right. 
God. That's yeah. Uh, Should have taken more calcium pills, I guess. Drink your milk. He wouldn't have broken a bone. <laughs> what? Have, uh, where do most of the like these cases come from? Are these all things that you have like seen personally, or? So it, it's it's half and half. So like I I mean some of them come from colleagues who will tell me like a like just a skeleton case. And mm-hmm. so they do that because it's de-identified, so that you don't know like the exact specifics. It's like of, it's like, important to share uh, these this information as well, too. So it's like it's I feel like because you talk about oh like medical privacy and stuff, but it it also is kind of a science where you need to sort of understand the situations, which means you have to share the information. You just you just strip any identifying information away, right? Like yeah, yeah, yeah. And, all and, the all the identifiers are taken away, and a lot of times, like when they give me a skeleton case. Like w- w- the reason the video expands out to like 10 minutes is because you have to explain like what's going on. So like how does vitamin A cause liver toxicity or how does five day old pasta that has that toxin on it cause like complete liver failure. Right. And so like when, when you expand it out that way, you also have to kind of like add an element of when you're telling the story, obviously the narrator knows everything that's going on. Right. It, they're like the omnipotent like presence in the story um but the reality is like you know the people who are treating the patient at that time has they have no idea what the patient did or what's going on and so like they have to do their tests they have to you know do the diagnostic criteria to to look at the patient and say like hey you know this is the information that we're presented with and these are all the potential problems that it could be but we have to make sure that we can narrow it down so that we don't pick the wrong problem and then go down the wrong path for treatment Right. Can you not eat five day old pasta? Is that a thing? I, this is yeah. such a good thing. First, segue. I've heard of it. All right. So I've eaten, I've eaten like way, way Alan, worse older things than five day old pasta. Alan Pan is that bad? has at one point, I don't even know if it's one point, Jesus Christ. Uh, <laughs> at one point, or at many points in Alan's life, Alan has straight up eaten food out of trash cans. Well, because like usually if it's like on the top. No, like, okay. The- All right. Eggs. It's recently thrown away. Alan, have you it's ever logical. eaten eggs that you found in a trash can? Okay, look, the most recent one, this one's <laughs> fine, okay? is when we were in North Carolina, <laughs> Nigel and Kevin both got chicken nuggets. And Kevin specifically, I remember, you just didn't like them. Why didn't you like the nuggets? I don't even remember. Because they were like, lighter. They, don't, they didn't sell like, right oh, in his the, tummy. The texture's yummy. wrong. Like, you were just like, oh, yeah, they, these aren't good. This they man weren't good. And I was a weird the textured chicken nuggets. That. This is what Yeah, happened. and so you <laughs> left, like, almost an entire, it was like a 10-piece. You left, like, almost the entire, you ate, like, two of them. You left the entire thing yeah. in the car. And so the next morning, like, we they got They were, like, the crunchier on the inside than they were on the outside. God, yeah, I but got, that's I have fine. one of those in the back of It was the opposite. They're McNuggies, right? But so then I found them on the floor of the car the next day. And I ate them for breakfast because what? Okay. Why? Why are you making that? You could do. You could. Pr- that's probably not, fine. Okay. Not gonna is go it, bad. They're is it bad to to eat something that's been sitting in a, a car overnight? Uh, is it hot outside? No. It was North Carolina, so cold. It, it, sixty I mean, fifty. Yeah, yeah, it was just chilly. Yeah. I mean, I mean, you're you're sun, you're pushing it. You're pushing it. I mean, it's like <laughs> it's not for one one day, twenty four hours. Yeah, I mean it, it's like I mean, hey, like four four hours is the, the limit. Still. Four it's hours, it's warm out, and they actually reduced it down to two now because it's like four hours. Like I, I mean, the reality is you don't know like how long people are leaving stuff out for. So like the less time, the better. Uh, I mean, you're you're pushing it at 24 hours left in a car in North Carolina of all places too. <laughs> so I mean, it, I, obviously there's a difference of Charlotte versus Raleigh, right? Because it's right. Raleigh's a little bit a little bit further north, but like. I don't know if there's like a hot sun beating in the car and then like then it turns cold at night. I mean, could be growing I, some bacteria, you know. Am I going to be okay? Am I going to well, I mean, if you're fine I, now, I you're have a question. Gonna... Yeah, that was like um, a month ago. <laughs> there's there's a there's a chicken nugget that's been in the back of my car for like 8 <laughs> months. Would you rather eat that or one that's been in a car for 2 days? Question. I eat both. What do you think safer? I feel like I feel like the eight month one might be the safest one to I eat. I think so too, because it's like jerky at that point. Yeah. It's been cured, but the toxins can still live on it, right? The bacteria is 
Dev, okay, still as like a medical, so, so the five as a day medical professional is giving different. us medical advice right now, you're giving us medical <laughs> advice. Which chicken nugget would you rather eat? <laughs> would you, if I had, if I told you right now, I'm going to eat one of these, which one would you tell me to eat? <laughs> I, I would take it from you and throw it in the trash and be like, no, you're not All right, eating My mouth one. is the trash can. Which one do you throw in the trash can? <laughs> You know, I, I put it I put that in one of my videos about the gas station sushi um, that the guy was like garbage picking food. I had a I had a friend in college who just garbage picked everything. And like that that's um, where it came from. And I mean, I've done okay, wait, all right, I got one for you. Uh what about uh how do you feel about pickling your own eggs that you get out of a dumpster at a Trader Joe's? <laughs> oh so you, boil, no, you, boil them, <laughs> you boil them and then you because there's too many, you get like a hundred eggs. You can't eat them all. Can't and so you hard boil them. them. And then you put them in a big pickle jar with the old pickle juice in it from the previous, from the pick. I ate all the pickles already. I don't think that's how pickling pickle. works. Yeah, it is. No, it is. It, it is. Pick, yes, the pickle you juice is You have to like boil it though. Yeah, it's he like did. sealed, Well, right? I boiled the eggs. Did you boil the pickle juice? Oh, yeah. No, you probably, like, it's probably self-sterilizing, yeah, vinegar. Yeah, I thought that was the kind That's of thing. Oh, what is with that? Why are you making that face right now? I, I just, I don't know, I man. You're, you're cutting it close. This man I mean, ate you're cutting it close. 100 eggs out of a dumpster behind Trader Joe's, <laughs> and this is what happened to his butt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, did it damage my brain? Is that is that no? I, I mean, if you're fine now, you're 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 okay, right? So it's, it's like a song. It, 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 what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. But is there what issue? What issue is there with like pickling your own garbage eggs? Is there a problem with that? I mean, you don't know where the eggs have been. I mean, it's they're, like, been, it, what if the been eggs... Yeah. They were inside they were of in a the, chicken They were in the dumpster. Point. I know, yeah, gross. I know. They, yeah, they, they were in a chicken, then they got on a truck, then they were on a display shelf, and no one bought them, and then they got put in the dumpster. But they were in no, somebody How long have they been in, they the in the dumpster for? Right? Uh, I don't know. All day, probably. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> I mean, were there rats crawling around? Were there cockroaches? Well, there he no pickled the rats right? too, so that should have been fun. <laughs> <laughs> no, but the issue is that to discourage people from stealing because they're afraid of like getting sued if anyone gets sick, what they do is with the with like gallon milk and like bags of flour, they'll like knife them open before they throw them in. So like everything right. is actually covered in this kind of rancid, like really like gross oh. milk flour yeah. kind of stuff. So you have to wash that stuff off when you get home. Other right. than that, I'll... there was no like you know, like Will said, you pickle the rats along with everything else. It's fine. Huh? You you can you can act in one of my videos. How about that? Yeah, I'm not sure it's acting. <laughs> so It'd be I, for I real. Like, I feel like no. If I if I was, ever was in a case like that where I ended up, uh, I don't know, like losing an eye from uh, eating pickled eggs that I ate from an, I would want I would want the opposite of anonymity. I would want the case to be named yeah. after me. Yes. You know, like yeah. whatever disease I get, I would want to be called like like a pan. Pan, uh, Sexual. Uh, Pan pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! Oh god! Pandemic! I didn't even think of that. <laughs> I mean, would that be glamorous? It's like you—you you know how people like you know they'll have like these like cuts on their arm, but then it's like just because they like fell and they're like, oh, that's yeah, and they, they try to like make a badass, like oh yeah, you know, I was in like Cicero, Illinois, trying to like fight these gangsters, and they stabbed me and shanked me yeah, or whatever, yeah, and it's really like yeah, one of them stuck the a stairs. they stuck an old egg in my eye. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, medically, what would happen if you replaced one of your eyes with a hard boiled egg? <laughs> As a medical professional who is giving us actual real advice right now, what would happen yeah. if you replaced our eye with a hard boiled egg? Yeah, on just, the record. just wait until it, uh, it, it, it pops open and it starts it? leaking in the in all the sinuses in your head, in your skull. It's like gla glass eyes, like they can they get moved around by the muscles with a hard boiled egg move around if it was in your eye socket. Probably like, crap. Probably mold right into your muscles. <laughs> it crack and then start leaking out the little no, no, uh, egg peeled, whites. And everything. Peeled. I'm not insane. You hard boil it, and then you peel it, and then you put the the soft <laughs> oh, in okay. your eye yeah. socket. He's not insane. The yellow or the the white or all of it, just the yellow, the right? Whatever you can the fit. Thing. You can the whole thing. Yeah, the whole. <laughs> no, you can't like fit a hole, and you got to take the yolk out. What if it's a small egg? Yeah, you could. I mean, what, if you're just hungry, you could just pull out your eye and just have it for breakfast. <laughs> <right>? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Finally, wait, I about... can have a nice breakfast for once, right? <laughs> it's already warm. 
Will, you didn't you have appendicitis, but they didn't take it out. Like they just yeah. kind of left. Oh yeah, what what I so I was watching that episode. Like I guess the very you first. You two taking notes episode. for a future video. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I was like, wait, so 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 tell me about the the appendix. So your, your appendix, I uh, I felt like shit. Like I had trouble sleeping. Like it felt like really bad indigestion or something. But I normally don't have stomach problems. So I uh, and we have we have insurance because Chelsea's a teacher, and so we have like pretty good insurance. And I'm sitting there thinking, like, man, I this is, does not feel right. Like this is this something feels wrong. Um, but if I was Kevin and didn't have insurance, I absolutely would have stuck it out longer. <laughs> so we went. We called urgent care. We go to urgent care. They told me uh, that if it is abdominal. All we're going to tell you to do is to go to the ER. So what you should probably do right now is just go to the ER and then we just won't charge you for the five minutes yep. you've been here. So I go to the ER and they uh, throw me on the CT scanner. Well, they gave me some like um, like lidocaine, like jelly that I like drank or something like that. Something that's supposed to like numb my stomach. I think it was lidocaine because it numbed my whole huh. mouth too. And, that um, sounds awesome. And then they threw me on the CT scanner uh, they did a scan with no contrast, and then they did a scan with contrast that makes you feel like you've like kind of peed a little bit, very very uncomfortable. Um, it's weird. How do they it does, do that? Do they inject you? Or they do inject you. Drink you. It? you know, it's it's inter They like they they hook you up to an IV and they do it remotely, so it like activates automatically, and then it just it huh. it does it just feels weird. It like kind of makes your wiener feel weird <laughs> like you've peed or something um weird and uh <laughs> yeah not particularly it didn't hurt or anything it was just like kind of a gross feeling um <laughs> and then uh the guy came back kind of excited he was like you have like a, a dilated <laughs> appendix like slightly dilated and that means you have appendicitis because I, I was thinking to myself like i probably don't have appendicitis because i was doing my you know i my my thesis you know doctoral stuff on google um before i went to the ER. <laughs> And uh, yeah, WebMD. Um, I knew it was cancer. <laughs> 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 and so they call in, I'm assuming like the on-call surgeon who showed up and I think he was kind of pissed. And so he's like fucking just jabbing me in the stomach. He's like, does it hurt? Does it hurt? And I was like, <laughs> and I was like, it's uncomfortable, but it doesn't like hurt. And I think he was mad because I think he like probably got called, you know, 11 p.m. at night to come for something that wasn't like critical. Um and they told me that there is an opportunity to potentially make it go away with just antibiotics. And so I opted to do that. And I was in the hospital for, I think, two or three days. And they weren't feeding me. Uh, and they, I wasn't drinking anything. I was just being hydrated, which was a very weird experience. But didn't they, like, ask you? They're like, so do you want to do surgery or not? They did and that, like, like I don't know. yeah, like, three days in or two days in. They're like, <laughs> do you want surgery? And I'm just like, no, I don't want surgery. Um, I'll just come back in a week if it starts to like crop up again and it just never cropped up. And so I think I came in early enough and was lucky enough for the antibiotics to kill what was, you know, whatever was growing inside of my appendix. Ugh. So that's, I mean, Bernard, are there ever like, is there like, uh, uh, do doctors ever get like excited when like some like to see some action? Are they like cops like who are bored on the side of the road? Yeah. Like oh, like finally Code someone three. came in with appendicitis. <laughs> it, it well, so here's the thing, right? So um, you, you know how like a lot of the medical disciplines like to throw shade on each other. Like if you ask, if you ask a kidney doctor like what's the purpose of the heart, their answer is to pump blood to the kidneys. Right. <laughs> it's um, to pump blood to the, your penis. That's yeah right basically answer. right are the balls and, the powerhouse of the dick is that true or yeah. is that and also additional tangent Absolutely. is the nipple the powerhouse of the boob yes <laughs> you you guys are getting this video yeeted that's for sure uh -huh. <laughs> i i've been around long i've been on youtube six years now and it's like yeah i, I know what gets yeeted <laughs> There you go. You you did it. Nipple. No, yeah, here's here's the thing. So like a lot of times the the shade that gets thrown in the emergency room is that like basically the the main purpose of the emergency room is to determine whether or not you can send the patient home or to move them further into the hospital. Mm -hmm. Uh so like you can admit them or discharge them. So like uh a lot of times appendicitis gets made fun of and it's like it's not appendicitis but like they just use that to to shove it off onto the medicine service. Right. Uh so so that's why this, that's probably why the surgeon was pissed because it's like he probably gets or he or she, whoever they were, probably gets like appendicitis calls from the ER like nonstop and like right. it's just like it, it's it's not it's not fucking Most appendicitis of the time it's not, yeah right. that kind of stuff so 
So that like that 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 might be one part of it, but the fact that after antibiotics, like they monitored you and then like you were okay after that, that was probably enough to be like, well, you were probably in the step down unit, and then they probably just discharged you afterwards. So it wasn't like too like bad of a case, medically speaking. So like, I mean, even as a person, you're probably thinking like, hell, I don't want to go back to the hospital. Like that right. was like that, you know, they hydrated me. I couldn't drink anything. It was um, it's with, horrible. The, yeah, they, they call it NPO in the hospital. So like uh, nil per os can't have anything by mouth. So it's just like you, you're like you, you probably felt thirsty, right? Yeah. And then you, you just have like all this like water going and through. I your was veins like, I like, was like minimally hydrated. Like they kept me just like on the right level yeah. of hydration. It's like so my piss is still kind of yellow. You just yeah. never really feel like you know, you're always a little bit thirsty. Yeah, they're in That's full control of your body in in that case. So yeah. it's like you know, it, and it's like it, it just sucks because you're just like. Like, I, I don't feel good. And it's like, I can't get anything done. Right? right. So it's like, yeah, but it like in terms of like, like hospital medicine, like you, it was probably like not that severe. It, it probably it could have turned into something a lot worse. Right. But thankfully, it didn't. So right. yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that I'm assuming like, like the they said that your appendix is like slightly dilated probably means that there is some problem with the appendix. I mean, there could be some inflammation. Uh, it also could be just your anatomy. You might just have a big. Yeah, I mean, that is. You know, I've got a couple of things that are a brag, abnormally. You know? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it it it, it could my, be a lot of different my things. Feet, so my feet are pretty big. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Eight inch appendix. Wait, how big yeah. are they normally? <laughs> yeah. I I don't know. Couple. I think it's probably measured in like maybe centimeters. So oh, eight inches. Yeah. Eight inches, oh, right? Appendix is like yeah. this big. Eight oh, inches, yeah. Eight, eight, eight inches I, uh, for sure. Fun <laughs> fact: I'm pretty sure the CT scan. I'm pretty sure they scanned my wiener. <laughs> oh yeah, I got an I'm X-ray like once, and I know they did. Ninety percent sure. I I wanted to go get the scan, uh, and then I could like rebuild it and print it and have like this just chunk <laughs> of my body that's like this. You're you're entitled to have it. So like, if How you long add, do they they'll probably it? give you like a disc. Uh years. I oh, mean, man, like I totally the. The person who the kidney cancer case that I covered, um, he was able to like, I mean, he's had the disc since 2012, but like, if he wanted to ask back, they still have it. Oh, do you so. want to see my skull here? Wait, I'll be right back. Oh yeah. Will's got his skull. He did Will get his skull. Actually, if he brings scan. multiple ones, he's going to ask which one looks the best. Say the, um, there's one that's white and it's, it's shiny. It's, uh, that's my favorite, but no one else thinks that. So you got to say it's that one. Say that one. Wait, what was this? Was this like a couple years ago? Did, didn't he make a video about this? Uh, oh, I mean, he I did his, this, his sinuses, right? This is from yeah, a sinus this may scan? Yeah, this like from that scan, but okay. uh, he made like a 3D printed his own skull. Um, and that, that I think is new. I think he's thinking about doing something with that, like in terms of merch, <laughs> like selling his own skull. And my favorite yeah. is the shiny, the shiny white one, but that's just me. But that's, that's the one that you should say. Okay. Speaking of 3D <laughs> printing, I, uh, I did 3D printing. Like when I first started YouTube, I could never get anything to work. Oh, really? What? That was like, was that like your channel or, or just like a side hobby? It was like a side hobby that I wanted to like make a video about it. And the reason why was because like there was discussion about like, I think it was, ABS printing like can potentially cause like cancer. Oh, I've heard like, like carcinogenic of ABS, and that's why you should use PLA instead. And I'm like, what is this? Like, I don't I, like. I mean, PLA is pretty much the winner now. I don't know anyone really who is like really, really for ABS nowadays. PLA is just good. Like, it just works. All right, are you ready? Good. Are you ready? Yeah. Yeah. Let's see. Yeah. Woo! So this is a, okay. a CT scan of my skull. There's a big hole in the back. That's where the, yeah, that was the problem is my brain slipped out. And so the procedure was to <laughs> put it back in. Okay. I like this one a lot better. Do you have another one? I have a white one. I like this one better than the white one already without seeing it. Yeah, you can see <laughs> way more detail. No, these, uh, this is different from the one I was talking uh, about. I, okay, okay. I, got a, I have a question. What is the little, uh, the little pointy bit right there behind the jaw? Is that oh a god process do you know what that is yeah some something like that I, now you, you're I jogging your mastoid process is behind your ear is it a bone like talking like like this little thing like right yeah, here it's, it's like a, a spike there's like a spike see if i can get is it is it a sharp spike it's like a sharp spike yeah yeah you, you got like the chad jaw do you see what i'm talking oh no that's that's the cutoff of the uh <laughs> oh no that I, I i i i see what you're talking about i i don't i don't that doesn't happen in 
like human anatomy. I see what you're talking <laughs> about. That thing right the, there. I think I think that's like a 3D brainworm. printing. That's a no, 3D it's printing not. thing. It's not. It could be. It could be a weird like scan artifact, maybe. Like a shadow. Because the okay. the CT scan has to like rebuild from like I feel like lower you'd be resolution. able to feel that. Well, like, I know, feel but like. Spikes. Yeah, something that, that sharp? No. Possible. Oh, we need to. Okay, we need to use our time more wisely. We need to get back to free medical advice. All right, we think Kevin has oh, rabies. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, I, I saw that episode too. You getting rabies? Oh, this did you? Do, did you actually? You got, saw like the video that raccoon? I should find that. I, l let me just tell you, I, I saw somebody drink a lava lamp before I saw somebody with rabies. So. Wow. What? <laughs> Why? What? You. Duh. You can drink a lava lamp. Yeah, when you, when you're going through <laughs> alcohol withdrawal, you become delirious. You can eat uh, sand, and it, that's too. like when you stop at cold turkey. So, you some people do uh things that they shouldn't do and they'll uh they'll be in mental states that they wouldn't normally be in and what i'm getting out of this is you can drink a lava lamp and survive yeah Pro product wow. product idea no no it was like permanent kidney damage i wouldn't oh god wouldn't edible lava lamp you can drink half a lava lamp and be fine <laughs> it's got like you know they have sometimes they have like a bottle cap on top to like seal it i think i've seen that before I swear to God, I've seen yeah, they yeah, do. It, it, it's a bottle cap. I, but we yeah, put so a twist. It's for a the twist prop off, in that video, so it's I like the... easier to you can twist it off and then you can drink the lava lamp. It's just it's just an idea. A sport okay. top. It's just a game theory. <laughs> pop it open. It's just a game theory. You can chug the whole lava lamp. <laughs> <laughs> what if you were, we took a lava lamp and you replaced the fluid with milk and then you just like let, keep it in your room with the light on? <laughs> I just let it go rotten and then wow. put it in the dumpster and then Alan will come and get it. <laughs> no, you wash off the rotten milk. You, what if you, okay. one, you fill it with water three. and then you put a bunch of eggs in it and you hard boil the eggs in the lava lamp. And then put it in your yeah, eye pickle? socket. Would it pickle? Wait, would a could... lava lamp juice pickle and egg? Yes. <clears throat> so how do you, okay, so let's say you get you get rabies. What is the, what's the procedure for, for rabies? Have you ever, you I mean, die? are you even familiar with it? Because it's, oh, you, that... you'd have to look at guidelines for that. I mean, it's, it's so rare. Um, I can pull them up. Do you have special medical? Like, there's no rabies in Australia, uh -oh. right? Did my audio cut out again? No, it's still there. No, you're no. fine. Yeah, we can hear you. I think it did. Can you hear us? I can't no, we hear, can hear you. you. Oh, no, can... no, he can't, he can't hear, hear us. us. Ah. He, look at, he was, we were talking in the chat earlier about the podcast <laughs> box. One sec. Um, we're trying to find a a, a box that there does. There we go. Okay. Look, we're we're going to describe the hardware we need. We need, a, we need a podcast box that can take an HDMI input, uh, an audio input, and then it has a USB connection that sends that combined feed. So like a webcam to a computer, but then it also acts as an audio device so it can receive audio from the computer. And then it has headphone output where it mixes the computer audio directly with the microphone audio in real time. And so you can hear yourself talking and then, and that's what I want. That's how I want to buy that. And there's some things that are close to that, but they don't have all the features. And uh, if anyone knows of, of a box that does that, Leave a comment. They're not. They're gonna be useless comments. I know it. They're always useless every time <laughs> I ask a serious question. It's called a computer. <laughs> Will, dude, you know what? Like in the the podcast where we talk about the Bitcoin miner, um, people are being like, "Oh, it seems like they've never heard of uh, like a heat pump." And I'm like, "Oh my god!" I think we literally talked about it. We, we talked, talked about, about a heat it. pump, like, like an air conditioner being a heat pump. Like I just want to bash my head. Anyways. No, don't do it because then your styloids are going to stab yourself yeah. in the jugular. <laughs> <laughs> How do I make it work? <laughs> so, like, you guys get a lot of neckbeard comments, right? Like, all the time. I think we, we realized are. that uh, well, mansplaining is not just men explaining things to women. It's also just men explaining things to everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I wouldn't even call it neckbeard. I know what it is, and it's like I don't. You can't get too mad because it's like sometimes you just like you you think you've got this sort of snippet of information to contribute, and it just like yeah. I I do stuff all the time where like I'll say something like in a chat, and then I go back and read it later, and it's like oh that kind of like comes off a little like it doesn't come out out how I intended it to be. And so I think ninety percent of comments is just that. It's like people sort of have something to contribute, and they say it before maybe the discussion on the podcast has been completely finished, and so you haven't like explored yeah. the idea completely, and that you might actually come to the same conclusion, or you just say something and it just you don't quite realize that it comes out in maybe a more negative way than you intended it to come out. I don't know. 
you know, I find that a lot in the comments because it's like uh, even today, like I, I I was just looking really quick and uh, I had a video about like somebody who did keto diet and it like exposed that she had like a pancreatic tumor. And like the person like he asked it, they asked in like this really like it, it seemed like really hostile at first. Mm -hmm. They're like, why do they think starving her was was OK or, or something like that? And it's like, no, like the, it's a controlled fast to see whether or not like her body is releasing crazy amounts of insulin for no reason like that's the reason for right. it and then like when you explain it they're like oh okay right. but like it, it just kind of like looking at the the initial message it was like it, it just it seemed like really super hostile and like one of those things like oh doctors are stupid they don't know what they're doing like right. they're gonna kill this woman or whatever and it's like no like but I, maybe i was reading it wrong but also like just when it's in text it, it's just kind of like harder to like kind of visualize like the person saying it that way right right i had one that i did and like uh god how long ago was this somebody they like there was a tweet that someone tagged me in where someone had made a tweet about um one of my shirts they like they weren't tweeting at me they didn't even know it was like a shirt that i had drawn and it was like uh, like something funny like millennials will just wear a shirt with a fat cat that says i'm in debt on it and like i i read it and i immediately thought that it was like criticism or like being negative and so kind of you know half joking half kind of like you know just being butthurt on the internet i i retweeted it and i was like at me next time and i went back and read it like 15 minutes later and i realized that it absolutely was not negative at all and i just like for some reason read it and just assumed or somehow read it as being negative and it, I've i felt like, stuff like that i felt too. like such oh yeah so here's one so Millennials are so fucking hilarious because they'll just wear a t-shirt with a poorly drawn obese cat that says I'm in debt. And it's like, I kind of read that at first thinking that it was negative. Like a boomer versus millennial kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, right. But it actually just kind of, I think it's sort of like more genuine where they actually thought it, it's funny. And so yeah. I like tweeted, I like deleted the original retweet and I said, I'm brain dead and originally read like, read this like it was making fun of my beautiful shirt, putting my clown makeup on. So it's like, I, I can totally, you know, I mean, you really can't get mad. It's also, I, you know how it is. Like, you just, it's just fun to complain about stuff, yeah. but like, it's easy to misinterpret what people say online, especially if you are used to like negativity and there is a lot of negativity. You just kind of like de facto assume that it was negative and it's like, God, it might not be. It just, uh, yeah. So it's frustrating. Wow, we should diagnose that. Yeah. It sounds brain, like you got a real brain problem. Brain worms. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> There's worms in my <clears throat> have, have you ever seen actual worms in an actual brain? Not in a Does brain. Um, I mean, you can find like amoebas in brains. I mean, that's also that's super Florida. rare. That's super rare. Yeah, yeah, that, that happened, happened at the... <laughs> Dude, I... I... Bad, yeah, that man. happened in... The... What is it? Disney Disneyland? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Right? No, Disney yeah. World. Disney it's World, like yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was like a famous, super famous case. It was... Uh, Somebody actually wanted to to do that video with me. I don't remember who, but I think that was yeah, the same the, year that a kid got eaten by a gator. Oh alligator God. in Disney too. It was not a good year for Disney. Would you rather do get eaten by a gator or a brain eating amoeba? Gator. Uh, you have to pick one. Ga gator's wait, probably wait, wait, quicker. Wait, or I mean, yeah. eat an egg that you took out of a trash can behind Trader Joe's. I, I choose that And then one. put it in I your choose, eye, too. Yeah. I still I choose, choose the gator. egg eye. You I choose, choose the like, egg eye. <laughs> can I do all three? <laughs> With a side of rabies. With a side uh, of rabies. Actually, if, if, if you get rabies... Ultimate battle royale to see which kills you first. If you get you rabies first. and a brain amoeba at the same time, do they cancel out at all, or does it just kill you like twice as fast? <laughs> hmm. That's like, what that's happened? even more rare than getting struck by lightning at that point, right? Yeah, I mean, at that point, the, like the person, Kevin, definitely did it on purpose at that point. We're assuming it's Kevin <laughs> in this case. He gets, he, gets bit, he, gets bit by, he gets bit by a rabid raccoon. He's like, oh, I know just what to do. And he goes into the Florida stagnant water and gets the brain amoebas in his sinuses. He's, He's just like, 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 right, like I'm going to die the water. Anyway, right? <laughs> Let them fight. <laughs> what, is, what is the disease that you are most afraid of as, as someone who deals with weird ailments uh i would say some of the neurologic stuff like um oh i had a God. video about the woman who spilled the mercury on her hand um <laughs> that that to me is is really the scariest thing because it's like like even if it even if it happened right which now we have the safety precautions in place 
But like, I mean, she, she it was like months before so we're she talking started that like the having mercury leak. Like she had a cut on her hand or something. And it's like mercury. Yeah, no, it was organic mercury, dimethyl mercury, and she had like gloves on. She was trying to do an NMR standard, okay. uh, and this was like back in the nineties. What like, is and, what is the gist of that organic mer mercury? Like, what is it? It's so, just... so it, it's organic mercury, so it looks like water, um, okay. but it diffuses through uh, like rubber gloves, rubber or latex. Like you actually have to have like a silver shield underneath okay. the glove for it to to not diffuse through the gloves. And, and so she like, was just she, doing she, some like, chemistry thing. It's like she was doing like NMR, alcohol. yeah, NMR calibration and using the dimethyl mercury as a standard. And so then that's way worse than like normal mercury, it sounds like. Like the, Yeah, I mean regular mercury. like regular metallic mercury is not gonna diffuse through your skin, but the organic yeah. stuff what does is it even lipophilic. mean that it's organic? So it, it has it's carbon containing. Okay. So it's just yeah. carbon and mercury. It was raised on a farm free range. It's very, it's like inorganic, which is kind of like just the molecule itself or like as a salt. Organic. Oh, so I, I had a I had a whole bunch of comments on that video saying like, oh, what what is organic? And like they, they were like trying to like roast me saying like, oh, did you buy from Whole uh, Foods or something? <laughs> I mean, that is kind of funny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but but so organic meant uh, carbon containing, and because it, it has it has the two methyl groups, and then there's that mercury moiety on there. Uh, it it's lipophilic, so um, it's kind of like it dissolves in fat. Oh, so it, it stays in the fat tissue and then starts distributing so through out. the gloves yep. into your skin Under and her skin. immediately starts being absorbed basically into your oh, body God. and stored yep. in there. And then that messed with her central nervous system. And it slowly leached out over like months. And then so oh, it, it was like a progressive decline neurologically for her to the point where like she ended up being like locked in her body. Oh, and like God. couldn't move, couldn't breathe. Like she was put on basically life support, and that was it. You can't and, like, do anything. Like it was like once she knew that like that had happened. Like there's nothing that oh, nothing they oh, nothing they could do. They 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 actually took her mercury <clears throat> blood levels and knew that it was already high. But then they they took a sample of her hair, and then they were able to trace back around which day it happened. And it, they looked at her lab notebook, and she had made a record in there saying that she did the NMR standard with dimethyl mercury. She thought she cleaned it up, like because there was like a, a minor spill, which she documented. But like she she thought she cleaned it up, but it had already gotten like on her, like it went through the gloves, and so like there was a huge spike in mercury exposure that was shown in her hair, uh, like just like a week or two after that, and so that's just like the absorption going in. And then, you know, going all throughout the body. And then what, what happens is it's basically like every other heavy metal toxicity is that when you look at the electron structure of heavy metals, uh, the reason why tin isn't uh, poisonous is because it's stable. But like when, when you go down from tin to lead in that same periodic table group, uh, the reason why lead is poisonous is because of the, the valence shell electrons. And what it does is that it interacts with sulfur. And so you have there out of the 20 amino acids that are in the body, two of them are sulfur containing. And so because it interacts with them, what it does is that it infiltrates your body and then it binds to the proteins that have the sulfur containing amino acids. And it just basically completely folds the enzymes in different oh. ways so that they're unfunctional. And then it also creates free radicals. So then it damages the, the nerves because it's just diffusing into the myelin, which is made of fat. And so from there, you just have this like degeneration that happens of your nervous system to the point where like she's just locked in her body and it's just like basically dead eyes. Like you try talking, doesn't move, like doesn't breathe, doesn't so do does, anything. Does the she small was still dose... like aware? Uh, likely she was, uh, ah. but we will have no, we'll never know. And like, that's the scariest part to me is that you're like basically locked off from the world. This is why it's important to fill your lab notebook out so that when you do die a horrible death, they can figure out why, but they do nothing to stop it. Yeah, any any uh, AP Chem students listening to this right now, this is why you fill out your lab notebook. So that you everyone knows how you die. <laughs> so like, was, is the ini initial, initial dose just working its way around her body or is it sort of like radiation poisoning where you're, there's like, there is a dose that's stuck in her skin that's like bleeding out slowly yep. or does the so yeah. so it's literally it's just constantly keeping her like at this like constant mercury blood level 
Yeah. I mean, by the time they found her mercury blood level, it was already like, I think it was like a couple hundred times like the upper limit of normal when they right. found it. So they used the chelation therapy, but the blood levels didn't correlate with the actual clinical symptoms because by that time it had already like so infiltrated. If they had caught it earlier, system. if they had cut her hands off, would that have helped? Oh, God. Probably would have helped. I mean, like Zombie if it was right away. Style, you know, right? I yeah, mean, like, yeah, I guess within like a minute after exposure, she just oh, did it. Maybe. I mean. Oh, God. Yeah. That, was, that reminds me of, um. I, I think I saw something recently on Reddit or something of a woman who was doing like prion research and she accidentally cut Prion herself. or prion? Oh. How do you say it? Prion. Yeah, I thought it was prion. 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 I and I think she died like eight think... years later. Like, it took like, a really long what? time for her to I hate that. Die That's oh, Can we talk about what is yeah. what is a prion? It is like so a, it's a protein. It's a protein. Yeah, it's pr it's a protein that's folded differently. And then uh, we don't really different. understand. We don't we don't really understand a lot of it. Uh, I, I think it was like that. 2005 is when they really started to like no more but like mad cow is prion disease yeah. there's the familial insomnia that happened i think in europe and like that was also a prion disease so I've like heard, that that stuff is i've heard that it's eating, like it's a, it's, like a, it's a cannibalism where you like like eating another right. human's brain is really bad yep. because the prions sort of just like stay and you're almost like absorbing any prions that were collected by like that body you're then just yep. consuming yourself. It's, and it's, it's like, like a misfolded protein that causes other proteins around it to yeah. also misfold and just become useless, right? And that gets That's in your so brain. Crazy. Your brain just becomes fucking like goo. Filled with like useless junk. It becomes junk. like an egg in a trash can behind a Trader Joe's. <laughs> it becomes like the hard brain as it looks already. It turns your brain into my brain. <laughs> So, so then, like, where does it come from? You just have to ingest it, and then it, like, it just sort of wreaks havoc, almost like... Yeah, yeah, it's kind of like how Mad Cow, speaking of, like, being impaled by, like, a spike that would have had a cow's head on it. Um, yeah, so, so I, actually, I didn't realize this. I talked to, like, a bunch of, like, cow farmers a couple weeks ago, and they were like, yeah, USDA inspectors are on the slaughterhouse floor, like, every morning. They're there the entire time that slaughterings are happening. And like you have to put the cow's head on a spike, and they have to inspect it. I'm guessing for things like mad cow, because like the moment that that thing gets out, I mean, you're gonna people are gonna die, and like they're not gonna die in like a glamorous way. It's gonna yeah. be like progressive decline. Yeah, right? and like ten years from now too. Yeah, that's why I don't understand. Like, like the government, I man. Without the government, dude, those cows, they would be like, no, nah, we don't care what kind of disease is in them. Ten years away, no one will be able to trace it back to us, <laughs> and they would just send it out. <laughs> Like, man, the fact that you, like, have somebody who literally sits there investigating to make sure that the cows are not. Could you imagine, though? It's like, all right. Uh, I heard that there was outbreaks before, like, in uh, UK or something, you know? They yeah. have a bunch of, like, healthy people kind of, like, get what looked like dementia. And it took them a while to figure out, like, what was going on. Oh, my God. That's so scary. That's, like, yeah, like as bad as the yeah. amoeba, the brain-eating amoeba. Yeah. It's worse, man, because it's slow and it's like you probably realize that you're something's wrong. We have a friend. Yeah, I think the, the lady who cut her hand with the in the prion research lab, she had, she essentially knew that she was fucked. She should just cut she her hand off. And it's like you just wait. Yeah. But like, yeah, I guess in the moment you, if use, she had the, immediately you use the same knife and then you just <laughs> then you oh god, then you got to get a clean knife and then go further up. I think they found that there was like the she was in, the lab conditions were negligent because I guess what she was handling, she was supposed to have chainmail gloves because they knew oh. like it was like the there's protocols that you're supposed to follow because it is a very risky thing they were researching and they just didn't fucking do it man I'll, i mean it, if if nigel were here i would say like some of the stuff that he does like i would definitely like take every single i would take so many precautions that i probably wouldn't even be able I to mean, make a like video the nigel freaking out that he breathed in the uranium dust like that's probably not good <laughs> <laughs> hey man <laughs> The way I see it, if I died doing epic science, <laughs> okay. He died the way he lived, very slowly and painfully. <laughs> <laughs> he died the way he lived, wanting to die all the time. <laughs> I, yeah, I just, I feel like, 
could you imagine though like half the way people have died is by things that they just had no idea like they didn't even realize it or they didn't like you could eat us you could eat a, a hamburger that has a bunch of prions in it and like oh dude don't prion don't prion. even prion. that that just don't yeah. do that next tiktok well, it, challenge prion I yeah that's fine it, if it's prion, and then it's like dude just smell some uranium at least you're in control of your fate at that point <laughs> Just yeah, think my, about like all the people in like the like medieval times that like died of stuff, or even like oh, kings that had like uh, that ended up having like mental illness, right? And then passing it on to their kids, and then like then that's the prince or that's the princess, and like yeah. you know spread it to another country after that. Like, I mean, and they had no idea, and like wh how did they explain it? Like possessed by the devil, or so? I I don't. Yeah, how exactly how many people that. do you think died because of like royalty and rulers who had like brain diseases that were still like in a ruling position and they just became like insane and like probably started wars or had people killed for bizarre reasons i mean that that happened in england right there was um henry the sixth he was uh he was the king of england and france like the only person to have done that but he inherited it and like like he, he it, get, it was to the point where like he didn't know how to have sex so like it apparently just like destroyed his, him like completely not being able to have sex no no not that wow. was that a no, rule but, or was that a brain know. disease I, I don't, or like it, no it was a king so so his um his 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 grandfather had mental illness as a professional <laughs> think, medical uh, we don't know exactly which one how do you uh, have I mean, no, I, how does, I know, but for everyone listening who might not know, how do you how do does it? sex how do you sex? Yeah, because you, you can the, the ball. You get two. You make. You can make two kids because you have two balls. The ball comes out, and it plants in the woman's tummy. You put it yeah, in your right? eye. You put it in your eye. Put it in the pickle jar. <laughs> you can look around with it with your fucking nut, nut eye. <laughs> No, you just you, you pee you pee on her and she becomes pregnant, right? That's oh, how that is. you know, I always yeah. had a suspicion. I always actually my I think my mom had a fucking story about how like uh -oh. uh, my dad in college. Uh -oh. I don't know how this uh -oh. happened. Like oh no, where's this going? Like like just, just the, the sort of like lack of like sex education in China at the time. Uh, I guess my dad had a roommate who in like college thought that uh, women got pregnant through some form of like male radiation and that like one like husband and wife when they shared a bed like that's how she became pregnant is just being in proximity to a man for that long oh my god um, i'm not sure if anyone explained how it actually like the ball thing i don't know if anyone told them about the two ball thing but um, right in the eye socket that must like that's one of those things where yeah but that's one of those things where like you just like I, I, it kind of makes sense, I guess, if you don't think about it for too long. Like, yeah, like that's how it works. You sleep together, and then radi man man radiation. Okay, what's the craziest misconception or like clear lack of understanding of their own body that you've seen doing doctor things? Um. Oh, that's a good question. That's uh, also funny, whatever also how does sex is, work? just gonna feel bad. <laughs> what? <yeah. laughs> What is it? Um, like there is such thing as broken penises. Usually happens when uh, with reverse cowgirl. Oh my god! <laughs> or if you close the car door, what is what, is, naked. what is riding a, a horse have anything to do with? Yeah, <laughs> good question. I have no idea. What? But like some, have you seen anything where someone, <laughs> someone like they had no idea how something worked, and you were sort of just like, like oh my god, like almost like like a child but like an adult with sort of uh understanding of a child of, of stuff that's uh i feel like sex is that's like a an good, obvious one so i would uh, you know what the the, th the most common thing that always made me like kind of wonder was uh diabetes mm. so like type 2 diabetes um like there were people who didn't know what carbo there's still people who don't know what carbohydrates are Mm. and like you tell them like you know you gotta like when you have type 2 diabetes like be careful with the carbohydrates especially you, i mean you gotta watch what you're eating in general when you have type 2 diabetes but like carbohydrates especially and so like you'd have these patients who are like you know 80 or 90 years old and have like never accounted for anything that they ate in their life and you tell them about carbs and like that concept is lost on them. Like you're like, yeah, bread and rice like are carbs. And they're like, oh, can I eat this? And then they'll bring like a bag of chips or something. And it's like, <laughs> no, 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 like carbs. Right. 
Yeah. I mean, Maybe. most things are lost on 80, 90 year olds. Even the sometimes yeah. the 80, 90 year old is is actually just lost. Most of them, general. not all of them, but. I, I think in like recent times, like, you know, a, a lot of times, like in, in like the cancer world, you'll see like a 78 year old patient who's like super fit doing like Iron Man type of stuff. Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They're yeah. either really and strong then... or really weak. There's no in between. <laughs> 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 so you haven't you haven't seen anything that like like truly was like almost like horrifyingly embarrassing. I mean, like missing the point or that you could share. I mean, missing the point, no. I mean, oh, like horrifying. Like, I, I'll, I'll tell you this. Like, the, it, I can sum this one up pretty quick. Um, so there was uh, a daughter, a mother, and grandma that came into the emergency room. I already hate this. I already hate wherever. It this sounds is like going. The, it sounds like I the know, lead into some really stupid joke. A bad, a racist joke. <laughs> no, or something. three no, women no, no. walk and, into and, an ER. <laughs> yeah, and then you realize that dad and grandpa are the same person. Oh, yeah, like no. you see, like there's like weird, weird stuff like that. So, oh, uh, Chinatown. Oh, man. Yeah. What? China, the, that was like the uh, spoiler alert for anyone who hasn't seen Chinatown. It's the end of with like Jack Nicholson. It's like a classic. I don't know. Oh, oh. oh I can't <laughs> my sister, my daughter. She's my sister and my daughter. No, someone in the comments is going to appreciate that. There's going to be one person who is going to understand that reference. <laughs> I gotta tell you about something I saw once. I, I used to work at a doctor's office. I was kind of like a. Uh, that was very irresponsible of them to hire you. Yes. Oh, was this someone where they let you use the X ray machine without training you? Kind of. <laughs> it was a mobile. It was a mobile fluoroscope scan <laughs> arm, and I would just like stick things like my phone, oh, and I'd stick my you, hand. I thought in it. I, did, I thought it was like a dental X ray. It was actually fluoroscopy. Yeah, it was like a mobile. That's, that is tiny, tiny that little is portable worst. DR. That is the worst kind of X ray exposure. No. It wasn't bad because it was like image intensifier too. Yeah, but right? that's and like it's, it's a, a like seventy kV. It's a continuous it's, it's source. A high power. That's the one that gives you the most exposure to radiation. It is like Kevin's just assurance of like, oh no, it's not bad. But it's it like was based like off a of nothing. fraction of a milliamp, right? It was at like point yeah, but zero. It's, but it's continuous. It goes Only on for like it. they do it for like hours sometimes though. No, yeah, but we we were doing people's knees. This was for like people that lost all the juice in their yeah. knees. They need. <laughs> Or oh, juice God. in the knees. All right, we got two doctors and, uh, on this so, podcast. So you had to do it with. Uh, <laughs> you had to like inject a dye that the uh, um, Bernard. What is uh, that? Is the, that is the term right? Knee juice. Yeah, knee juice. There's actually knee six juice. different juices. Synovial in the fluid. Knee. Yes, synovial fluid. Yeah. Oh, okay. And well, you would now, inject now. them with. I for, I forget the name of it. Dine saw. <laughs> <laughs> It was a, uh, it like was chondroitin. Mer marine grease. <laughs> it was like a oh, really you got like eat a, it again. <laughs> it was like a thick polymer type stuff. I can't remember the name. Of this, oh, is it, it like, was a like a lube, like, like a like a lubricant that they inject? It literally was. It was what it was supposed really? to do was lubricate the inside of their knees, so they were are, are you, less inflammation. Is it like the chondroitin? Like, I can't. No, it was like hyaluronate or something. Oh, like, hyaluronic acid. Yeah, I think that was one component in there. But this was like actual medication. I mean, it was kind of like a place, oh. but... A place. Were there steroids in it too? Like corticosteroids? No, it wasn't that. Okay. I'm um, trying to see if I could find... Anyway, so so we had a bunch of people come in. They did like 20 or 30 injections a day. And you meet all kinds of... Men. And one of them stuck out to me because I... It was a video that you did. It was about somebody who picked off their skin cancers. And we had oh, a yeah. patient come come in. Yeah. And they're, you know, he's full of kind of like scabs all over himself. And oh. he's like, you know, cancer history. He's like, yeah, I've had skin cancer before. But like, you know, I had one on my arm and I just I, I just kind of dug in there. And they were like deep. He was really digging in there to get his skin cancer out. Oh, my and God. And the doctor, I'll never, oh. I'll never forget her face of horror. When he said that he was like picking his own cancer out of his skin, she was mm -hmm. oh, horrified. This is why we. Although, this uh, is why healthcare needs to be more expensive, is so that more people pick the cancer out of the skin themselves instead of going to a hospital <laughs> to have it picked out. I mean, it's the same principle as cutting your hand off real quick if you get methyl mercury on it. Just like somehow grosser. <laughs> yeah, one of them is like, like, well, like a you only get the surface off, so it's gonna thing. like spread. Yeah. yeah, I mean the the little cells they once they start flowing around do you know that guy like little cancer seeds he was picking yeah. he was picking that stuff off himself because he just didn't want to deal with like going to no he he just thought that he could do it he thought that he yeah had but skin like cancer he picks it off and it's good but 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 
I don't know. I don't think there's really anything I could say right now that would make any of that make any sense. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is. Uh, uh, how about something less horrifying, Bernard? Uh, you have if you had to die by a disease, like not natural causes. Like you have. What's the best one? What's Super like the most AIDS. Pleasant? <laughs> what's the most pleasant disease that you could die by? I mean, whatever does it quick, I guess. <laughs> is that like uh, opioid uh, heroin uh, overdose? <laughs> I mean, those those are pretty awful. So <laughs> wait for okay, the patient no. or for the doctors trying to revive them. You should, for Jesus. both. <laughs> I always thought that you know, overdose on heroin would seem like a good way to go. But that a good one. I guess. I mean, I mean in, in Dare, you, they you, always say it's bad. They're always like, "Oh, look at how horrible he's dead." But I mean, well, you you basically just stop breathing, and then you know, if you survive it, you'll have like permanent brain damage, like hypoxic isn't that kind of like brain damage. What they do in hospice, they like kind of slowly overdose you. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, I don't really do <laughs> hospice stuff, so um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, you, you know, you know what's interesting. So um, I mean, if 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 Alan was mentioning um, like people from China. Uh, I I would recently was talking with uh, like a group of people who translate my videos on Chinese social media, and like the the Chinese view on death, like they I, like apparently they don't euthanize their pets, right? Oh no! Like, oh. They, oh no! They just I, drag it out. Well, so so I mean they they see it as well. You're killing it, period. So like that is not killing it, right? So like the the view on death is different over there. Th that's why video games can't show skeletons. Like they oh, they see that. it, they yeah. see it as as like, like a like a kind of like a curse. Thing. Yeah, it, it's a superstition thing too, partially. But it, it's also like kind of like it's just the the view on death is different over there than it is over here. Like over here, like you know, we just kind of say like, well, it's time to you know put Fido to sleep or whatever. We have like entire because, stores yeah. dedicated to death merchandise. It's a hot yeah. topic. We just had to put <laughs> my my family dog down, and it's like. It was a long process. You know, there's like three different things they have to inject. And I'm like, this is hard for the dog. Oh, my so God. I was wondering, we like, put our dog down, dude. You could have just given him a treat with like fentanyl. They had something. they had two shots. They had the painkiller shot and then the actual like euthanasia shot. They they, they injected him with the painkiller shot and he just died. <laughs> they did. They didn't even they didn't even get to the second shot. The dog was like so done that just being yeah. like relaxed a little bit was enough to. Oh, God. Damn. Like wow. that was, and I think, I think we, I mean, it was kind of like, it's, it's sad, but it was like also sort of like, do we have to pay for the shot? <laughs> the one that he didn't <laughs> oh, the second one, like when he didn't use it. <laughs> well, like, I, it I think you all again. mentioned this. You mentioned this in the, I think one of the episodes, maybe the first one, but you had mentioned like with potassium being like super dangerous. Oh yeah. Cause I was saying nobody gets enough potassium. Yeah, no, yeah, potassium is more dangerous than sodium because, like, sodium, you can, like, your body has mechanisms to get rid of sodium, but, like, potassium can stop your heart. So, like, that, that that's what they do for lethal injection. How many bananas do I have to eat? That's what they do for <laughs> to die. To die. How many bananas do I have to eat to die? I'm that's saying that video. people don't get enough, that's though. Video title. Kevin, <laughs> Kevin's saying, like, he wants to kill everybody. People need more <laughs> potassium. <laughs> <laughs> they need all the potassium. <laughs> I mean, your your body does a pretty good job, like holding on to potassium, but um, I, you'd have to eat a shit ton of bananas to like a hundred bananas, thousand bananas. What if you mainlined a banana? Banana. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I feel like you die of some other problem, like having yeah. banana in your vein. <laughs> Just IV push that thing right in, you know? What, yes. what is it? A, 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 a stroke? I mean... Where you're? What happens when you when blood stops flowing? What is that? Um, oh, I mean, you could have like ischemia. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, like if if uh, instead of if if a chunk of a chunk of banana in your, in your bloodstream, <laughs> <laughs> you can have an embolus just to, you know start blocking blood flow to random parts of your body. Yeah, <laughs> you, you know what's a scarier one though is when like you start bleeding everywhere in your body. I forget what that's called. I mean, it's not. Oh yeah, the hemorrhage. Oh no, it's like something that that pregnant. It's like a complication of pregnancy where you can just like wait what i don't know you're the doctor <laughs> wait wait when, when you <laughs> when you start wait wait, wait wait but what are you referencing like it's like a bleeding like some bleeding thing that can come on suddenly like a it's phenomenon like body, where you just all of a sudden your blood vessels start leaking internally or something or I mean, it's, it's like some it's like some weird clotting thing i mean like Ebola? all over your, 
or like... oh, I think it it is like a clotting thing. Maybe you're right, where it does clot everywhere all at once in your body. Oh, D D I C. So disseminated, yeah, intra called. yeah, D I C. Yeah, in I disseminated asking, like, intravascular coagulation. Yeah, oh, and like you'd, you'd have a bunch of like residents yeah, make like dick nightmare. jokes, like oh, dick D I C. Ha ha. Is that just you no? Know, the doctor that I used to work with said that like that was her. He had to deal with that stuff before, and it was her least favorite thing to ever yeah. deal with. Oh, it, it's it's awful. I mean, when, when you have yeah. when you have DIC and like sepsis or septic shock, like it, it, you know, it's like they just start bleeding everywhere. Like they'll start bleeding out of their eyes, bleeding out of their nose, Ugh. bleeding out of their anus. Anus. Hey, that's what? the one word you're not allowed to say here. Can you say? Oh, we we got <laughs> yeeted again. How, how many times is that now? Yeah, we Six we times. don't we we use the word asshole, not anus. <laughs> 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 okay, so straight up, there's a thing where you can just you can just you start clotting inside and then bleeding out all your orifices. Yeah. So what it does is it consumes like all the all the like little factors. So it's like your your small blood vessels like all have clots stuck in them, and then there's no more clotting factors for the rest. So then the 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 big vessels will kind of like start leaking blood out, and then you'll just kind of like is it's just, just guaranteed blood you're everywhere. gonna die. You're just gonna die. Like there's nothing they can do about it. No, I, I mean, you can treat it. It's just a pain in the ass and like you have no idea like what comes next. Like it, it could it could turn out better. It could start to get even worse. Oh, my God. Yeah. It's almost sounds There's just like too many things that can go wrong with human body. Yeah, it's, it's a, a yeah, lot. it's like, dude, I feel like it's like computers. Like it's just there's so many little things happening that it's a miracle that it works. And it's very similar where it's like you when you really start like System hearing crash. about the complexity. Yes. Like if one little thing it's goes like one wrong, little thing. Mm hmm. And it just if you're lucky, it's not that big of a deal and you can kind of just either ignore it or compensate for it. But like, dear God, like like if if two things stop working, if two of the perfect <laughs> storm things stop working, now all of a sudden you're bleeding out of your asshole. <laughs> <laughs> or you uh, what is it? You eat like dumpster food and then you get a, an infection and then it pops your stomach. Right. And then now you have bacteria from your gut it's just in your blood flowing all around right your blood pressure starts to drop you know uh is you have that what happens uh is this sound familiar at all alan is this oh god no i feel like if anything maybe it made me stronger no that's not true it definitely made me weaker <laughs> <laughs> now, there's got to be some logic to that right is there where if you eat bad food a lot you become no more resistant to it okay yeah what's the I deal mean, with like, that the bacteria i mean you're just it's... putting yourself at risk i, I mean the, the fact that he's sitting here and looks fine i mean he's probably <laughs> fine right it's a he's probably well, fine. does he look in fine? terms of like long-term stuff i mean it, probably not i mean just don't keep doing it like you know what you it? might be vaccinated against whatever bacteria is in that now that <laughs> garbage can botulism you think i'm yeah to botulism? is that why your is that why your skin looks so good on your face does it look good? It looks shiny. I feel like there's a bit of shine on here. <laughs> I have a little shine too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Combination skin, you know. Do you well, have wait, a? I sure would love a cure for that, Doc. You know. <laughs> do you have, Do you have uh, any experience with uh, with X rays and radiation? <laughs> Not too much, honestly. Uh, did you see? I I did a video about. I saw your uh, video. Um, what what I is your, your professional medical advice that you're giving us right now? Opinion about that video? <laughs> uh, I mean, just just in terms of like radiation, like I I'm just I I'd be careful with any of it, like any amount of radiation exposure. So like a lot of times, like they don't like doing scans on pregnant women because mm -hmm. like you're exposing two people to to radiation that you know if you don't need to do it, then don't do it, right? Right. So like in those cases, I, I mean, that stuff is scary because it's like you hear about how radiation oncology became a thing. So like when they use radiation to like burn out cancer or like burn out like metastases, right? They try to target it. Mm -hmm. So they try to like, you know, make it so that the radiation just goes to the point where the, you know, the lesion is. Right. Um, so like for me, like when I heard about like, you know, radium girls, because it's like Whoa. that's like required reading when you're in the hospital. Like they want you to know about this kind of stuff. So yeah. like, that was like in New Jersey, women who, they, they were working mm -hmm. with glow in the dark paint and it glowed glow in the dark because it was radioactive. And they would like play with it and like put it like, yeah, they, they, they'd, they'd the wet nails. the toothbrush on their tongue and then start painting. And like it was it was apparently at the nightclubs, it was like the cool thing because like their mouths were glowing and it's like, look at me, right? And then, and and then, then like they all died. <laughs> 10 years later, their jaws drop off and like they're so weak, they're... they can't even go to the actual like deposition for the lawsuit. 
jaw droppingly gorgeous. <laughs> Sorry. Have you ever seen a? <laughs> uh, yeah, I. Uh... Hey, have you ever seen a styloid process? No, it's. <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> so. So basically, what is the like determination for deciding to do some sort of radioactive scan on somebody where it's like, or I guess radiation scan where you're using like x-rays from a CT scanner or like fluoroscopy is like the really aggressive one where like the dose you get from fluoroscopy where it's like real time, like video x-ray is like, it might be lower, but it's much more consistent for like, you know, minutes or, 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 you know, God, I think they can go for quite a while doing surgery on somebody and they need to see on the inside. You said that was for knees, so they guide the needle using the fluoroscopy readout? Yeah, to make sure they're in the joint. And you have to be wearing a lead apron, I'm assuming. Oh, Jesus. No. It's it's so <laughs> directional, and the dose was so low, they didn't worry about it. Okay, but, but I'm the like, thing is, that, here's right the thing. I don't, I don't know if if you didn't wear it because you actually don't need it or because of the doctor that you were working with. Let me tell you that this place was run by a chiropractor. So, all right. Oh, geez. Oh, Kevin is Daryl now. <laughs> well, it's also Florida man, right? So, Florida. this uh, was in Florida, right? What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. That's it, true. It, it was in Florida. He said it. Uh, uh, <laughs> so, like, how do you? How do they determine like what is worth it and what's not worth the exposure? Yeah, so it would it would be based on like uh, like given the differential diagnosis, like do we really need to have that image, or like can we get mm -hmm. around with like something like like in your case where they just did antibiotics, watch and wait before actually doing the surgery, and then after some time they're like, well, if you want to do the surgery, you could, right. but if you don't have to, then don't. So they like did the scan, they, they no have questions, to wait, right? Because it's like they need to see what's inside to make sure, and that's more important. Like the X ray risk is more tolerable than if there actually is something wrong inside of me yeah i mean for like because you're because you're a guy like they like they don't have that worry okay. about like what if you were a woman that was pregnant uh, right? right so yeah i don't think x-rays yeah. are really like on their list of things to worry about unless it's like oh you're getting a lot of or something yeah we yeah. found a, well, there's a I mean, chart a pretty good chart well, I'm not a doctor. So. <laughs> well, so the other thing too is that it, it's it's not necessarily like you know if you you do the X-ray once and it's like all right, fine. But like, what happens if like they go to a, a like another urgent care like you know a couple of days later and then get another X-ray yeah. and then another X-ray after that and then it's just like just repeated times because you don't know what what happens afterwards. Like especially right. if the patient goes to a different ER or a different institution to get care you have no idea where they're going to be and what they're going to be doing, right? So, you know, it, it's like, well, if, if we can minimize the exposure where we are, like, that's that's It's just the, the responsible practice. thing to do, yeah. Because, yeah. like, I think a lot of times some of this stuff is sort of just, you sort of follow the protocol because it's, it's easier to follow the protocol than to have every doctor really truly understand the, like, x-ray exposure, you know, like, science. Because it's like here, yeah. like, there's this XKCD chart radiation dose chart which is like kind of shows the scale and it basically shows that eating one banana is like 1.1 microsievert and then a dental x-ray is five microsieverts so it's like you have to eat 50 banana eating 50 bananas is the same like radiation dosage as getting a dental x-ray which all things considered is like kind of way closer than yeah, you would think it would be bananas is super easy you can right. definitely eat 50 bananas you could yeah so like you could eat you could probably eat 50 bananas in how many days could you eat 50 bananas in without ending up in a chubby <laughs> video 10 i, I think you could eat days. 50 bananas in like three days <laughs> you probably could what would your shit look like <laughs> banana <laughs> Like a banana <laughs> yeah, ice cream smoothie. It's, gonna come, it's just going to come straight out. And then, like, uh, <laughs> a flight a flight from Man, New York to LA bananas. is 40 microsieverts. Oh, yes. Yeah. So it's like a dental x ray is equivalent to, you know, five or eight dental x rays is equivalent to a flight. So it's kind of like, like, if you get on an airplane a lot, like, you're probably getting more radiation from being on an airplane than you are from getting x rays. And then it, you know, you obviously. Oh, what's one you, chest X ray? The chest X rays are bad. The chest X rays are equivalent to, um, actually no, like chest, a, a chest X ray year. is half of a, a flight to, um, from LA to New York. What's the one where it's like twenty microseconds? You know, 
Uh, that's it's probably like a, be like a CT, a like a full year. body like CT. A, a head CT scan yeah. is two millisieverts. So that's, I think it also depends on like where you're getting scanned. So like your head, they, they take it, like the risk I think is much higher. Right, because you could x-ray your hand all day. And it's... Yeah, like x-raying your hand I think is basically like almost fair game. Like you're like the chances of damaging something are much lower than if you're doing your head or your chest. Um, and then your yearly dose from natural potassium in the body is 390 microsieverts. So it's just like, like look, a mammogram is 400 microsieverts. That's like 10 flights from LA to New York. Will's, like, Will's dude, fish, he's, he's fishing to, to, well, no, to I'm see just, that his exposure wasn't bad. Here's a chest, a chest <laughs> CT scan. He really scan. needs that confirmation. I know, I do. A chest <laughs> CT scan is seven millisieverts. That's pretty brutal. So chest, like if you're doing a chest CT scan, that's something you probably want to avoid. <laughs> Dude, I, like I have a good reason to do those scans because they're also expensive people... too. Are they really? How oh, much really? does it cost? I mean, well, chest. So so CT in the in the ED. Um, I mean, you would prefer the CT over. I, I mean, ba you couldn't get an MRI for the most part from uh, from the ED. So if you really need like something quicker, then CT would be your better bet. But also, it, it, it's like a lot of times, like depending on the physician, they might not even order like certain blood tests because it's like they, they, they like to, they, they need to have a good reason to order the test, right? And so it, it's just trying to be more conscious when they do practice because it's like, well, you're, you get paid for a lot of these tests and it's like, it, it, fee for service, then you can start being like, oh, well, we have to do all these tests so we get paid for it, right? That, right. That's what happened in the old days, but they don't, they, they try to be like super mindful. It depends on who it is too, so. Oh, that's a good question. Uh, medical finances, why is it so, oh, yeah. why is it such a disaster? Yeah, I was gonna ask I would that. love to hear your opinion, because it's like, it's Everyone's one of those got things. Their finger in the pie. Yeah, it's like, yeah. it's, so like it's when you go to a hospital, doctor. you you obviously have to pay, and then mm -hmm. there's like a whole, you know, insurance, thing to, to help you pay for it but then it also feels like there's just like kind of weirdness going on and people will sort of get a bill that they have to pay without insurance but it's not lower and they have to fight for it and it's just kind of like a weird little system that seems kind of like like how does that happen or, or you know why does it work like that as opposed to just you know you go to a hamburger joint buy hamburger and you, you pay them five bucks it's on the menu like why is it less of a menu and more of a weird almost like experience where you have to pay, you know, like it's just bizarre. I, you know, it was interesting when I was talking to the cow farmers, I had mentioned, I was like money and medicine are just really like wholly incompatible. Mm -hmm. um, because if you think about it, it, it's almost like religion and money, right? It's like, if, if you, if you see a rich priest, like it's suspicious, right? Right. If they're and hiding like money you in see the like, walls of their bathroom that a plumber finds. Right. <laughs> No, that's just God helping them out. I thought that's God that put worked. the money there. That makes actually a yeah, lot of sense. Yeah, God I, buys the private jets via the the people putting the money in the the donation thing. You know, a hundred dollars worth of ones will stop a, a bullet, and so if you line your walls with ones, <laughs> is that true? No, I don't. I just made that up. <laughs> Like it makes well, sense. Whatever though, right? the case is, I mean, he's like not, he's not a doctor. Med medicine, medicine, and money really are like incompatible, though, because it's like when when you're on your deathbed, right? So like money, money represents like scarcity, right? It represents right. the fact that we have unlimited wants, but there's only so many things that we can have, right? Right? There, there's like literally a physical limit, right? It's like how you when choose, you're on your yeah, how you choose to spend right, when, the labor that you've done, right? And when you're on your deathbed the concept of limited resources doesn't matter to you. Like right. you, it, you yeah. will take and do yep. anything that you can to not be dead and to not feel the way that you do. Right? right. So it's like that immediately is kind of like already where the incompatibility starts. Then what happens, like, let's just say you come to the ED and you're unconscious. Right. And so now your care has to be facilitated. Like you're basically your life and your physical being is in the care of people you have no idea who they are mm. and they're doing things that you don't know and they don't know who you are either, right? So they need to figure out what happened for you to become the way that you are, right? right? And then like, and so like it, they could they could go the whole gamut of trying to find anything and everything, and right? And you have to pay for it, and, but you don't, like you could all of a sudden you like, you, you pass out and you wake up and they're like, oh yeah, you owe us a million dollars. And it's like, You're what? saved, but you're totally bankrupt. Right. Right. And you have no right? idea what and happened. So, 
Yeah, and it's it's like and and th- that wasn't like you had no choice in any of that. Let's right. just say you got into a car accident, you got knocked out, right? And then now you're in the ED and they're trying to figure out what's happening to you. Find out that you have like some traumatic brain injury and there's like it's bleeding and it's expanding in your bra- in your skull right there, right? So it's like when you have that kind of issue, like you know, th- then they they have to start draining your skull, right? They're doing all these operations and then maybe you need plastic surgery too because there's facial injuries and like you're not conscious so you can't tell them no i don't want the plastic surgery no i don't want you to to drain my skull right That's like my skull juice like, <laughs> right <laughs> so, so there, there's all that there's that element to it but then there's also the element too is like you know i i got hit by a car when i was in college and i went to the ed right and then uh they gave me a tylenol and the tylenol was 40 dollars for one tablet oh and it's my like god that makes no sense like right. why is like i could you know how I'd many bottles i pain. could buy from the pharmacy I would, yeah, exactly. I, if you paid me $40, I would endure pain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so like, uh, I mean, when you, when it comes into that kind of stuff, it's like, you know, yes, from the hospital standpoint, like, uh, so basically the, the medicines in the hospital, a lot of times, like the IV bags, like they're specifically prepared, let, like take potassium for the example. In some cases, potassium comes in these vials and they need to be diluted before they get infused into the patient. Right. But let's just say they prepare that IV bag and then they deliver it to the floor. It's waiting for the patient, but they didn't realize that, Hey, this patient is going to be discharged in like four hours. We don't need this bag. So now they throw that bag away. Right. So then where does the cost of that bag Mm -hmm. come from? It comes from the next time that somebody needs to use it, but they've already thrown that one away. Mm -hmm. So the next one that gets made is the one of the cost that gets passed on to the next person or next patient. It it goes to their insurance. But like that, that that's where the waste part comes from, is that there's a lot of like like disjoints that happen inside right. a, a, like any given hospital it's and like false any positives, given war kind of we'd rather deal with false positives or like wasting resources than like missing something right and so like that's why hospitals like i mean if, if you look at the the waste that comes from hospitals it's like there's a lot of it i right. mean medical waste is like huge it's, it's like a huge issue and so uh, i mean but that also brings back to the point of limited resources and when somebody's on their deathbed, they don't care about limited resources. Do, that right. concept does not matter to them. That's so why you it's get like, all those cancer like scams for cures. You know, like drink this tea and cure your cancer. It's targeting oh, yeah. people that are like desperate. Yeah, and like the like the whole snake oil salesman kind of thing. Like yeah. you know, the the reason why we have the like the, I, I mean, free market people are going to be really pissed off about this. Yeah, but like, don't worry, everyone's the reason, pissed off no matter what you say. <laughs> the reason why why we have a lot of the stuff that we do is because of what has happened in the past. So right. it's like, well, when you have snake oil salesmen who are profiting off of the fear that somebody's going to die if they don't take this, right? Like that's an issue because we have we don't have any data, or there it, the data has shown this doesn't has zero efficacy, right? But so people it's will like, defend well, it. Medicine, people will defend. Big medicine it wants to keep their profit. Yeah, that's why there's no data. But even like people who consume the snake oil will like defend it because it's almost like if they admit that it was bad, it was like they did something stupid, like they fed into, they like believed the snake oil, and so it's like right, it's like you can't convince somebody otherwise. They just sort of like you know like I well no it it has to because like they're desperate. They've already sunk cost like they've sunk money into it, and they don't want to be wrong because if they're wrong, it sort of means a they're not solving the problem they think they're solving, and b it's like then they're dumb for falling for it. Like right. It's just like a mess. But also, if yeah. you sell enough snake oil, just by odds, one of those people is just going to, at random, go into remission and they'll be like, yes, the snake yeah. oil works. Right. What if some scientist yep. discovers that actually like squeezing the oil out of snakes is some sort of miracle cure? Well, I, I mean, snake what they oil. Then that would be did. great. Snake I mean, oil, that would be, hey. Salesman. Is it literally, <laughs> wait, wait, what is snake oil? What is the, the literally It literally came from like people selling like actual snake oil. No, that's... So yeah, why is, would they call it? How do you get oil, oil out of snakes? Well, like the way you get out of any other animal, I guess. Oh, cow oil? I've never heard of cow oil. You just you pick it up and you wring it out like a wet towel. But isn't cow oil like butter and lard? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, technically. Well, snake oil did at one point refer to the actual oil or grease yeah. made from snakes. Cold See? expeller <laughs> press. There's no way cow. Like, it's got to come from something real. Oh, snake oil. All natural cold press snake juice. Snake juice, snake oil. <laughs> Pressed. <laughs> virgin it's virgin snake oil 
<laughs> extra extra version. I, I mean, to some snake extent, oil. you have to be careful because it's like, do we have modern day snake oil right now? And like, oh, yeah. people trying to like label things as cure alls are like modern day snake. I think so, there's. I, think I, there's I worked a lot in a of, food store. Yes, they do. There's a lot of hybrids. Yeah, I think where it's it's half snake oil, half legitimate. Like, I was looking at uh, like HEPA filters to see like how much it would cost to do like a whole house HEPA filter. And like reading the comments, you realize that it's like, it is legitimate, but it is also a bunch of like snake oil where people will like over promise on the benefits of like whatever a system like that could do. You know, it's like trying to turn your house into a clean room is basically impossible because you're going to have other dust sources and shit. And then you also have like positive or negative pressure. So like, it'd be like a whole engineering problem. Like you basically have to like do it like a hospital would and it would cost too much money, but someone will still gladly sell you a system for like way more money than you should be paying and promise to you that it'll do all the things. And so it's like a weird, like, like half snake oil, half real. And it's hard to Believe sort me, of it's tell. Like the, like the HEPA filter actually does Correct. filter out the particulates. It's Correct. just that the effect that it has is not yeah. as much as it like depends a lot more like, on your oh, choices yeah, like, of how you use it. Correct. And yeah. Prepare. And so like if, if, you know, they, they sell full home systems where you could like have the HEPA filter filter essentially your entire house and it's like a much more industrial setup, but it's really expensive and it might not actually have any of the benefits that they promise you as opposed to just getting a floor unit that you plug in that you bought for like, you know, a couple hundred bucks on Amazon or something. We're just opening a window. Well, that'll make it worse. It's like to get rid of like. Yeah. Like in Amazon LA, that definitely stuff. makes I, it worse. Oh, I guess in LA it would be worse. Yeah. But I've heard in <laughs> a lot of places it's bad indoor. Yeah. Like I dude, I've had I've had like sinus problems for the longest time and like I've never been able to figure it out because like I'd feel like groggy, like kind of always a little bit cloudy and like almost like I couldn't tell like am I not sleeping well or whatnot. And I remember like in college, at one time I was like in a class and I like had my head down like this and I brought my head up and then like this brown fluid just started leaking out of my nose. Yeah, I had the same face. I was like, what the fuck is this? And I like I like got a napkin, like a tissue that I had, and I like, I like, like did it again and like soaked some of it up, and I put it in a bag and I like took it home and froze it because I was like, oh my god, like is this like <laughs> brain juice or something? Like I don't know. Um, did you put it in the dumpster and then Alan picked it up? Alan came and ate it. I he ate sucked the brain juice. Eggs in it. <laughs> and but it, I, I'm I at this point I'm like a hundred percent certain that it was my sinuses. It was like fluid buildup in my sinuses, and. Uh, I inevitably got my sinuses exploded where they like expand the opening because there was like a buildup. That's where my skull scan came from is they scanned oh, okay. it to look at the like sinus openings. And then the doctor's like, yeah, the, the openings are really small. And so it's like having trouble essentially draining the like mucus and fluid out of your sinuses. Cause I would get sinus infections really frequently. And I think for a while I was like living with sinus infections. So I got the, the, um, the sinus, like the balloon sinuplasty or whatever they call it. They hydraulically expand the uh, the openings, and it like it sounds like an egg. It sounds like someone's crunching an egg inside of your skull. Ugh. Don't worry, you're drugged up though. You're awake, but uh, <laughs> they give you Valium, which makes you not care oh, no. about <laughs> about someone making egg crunching noises in your head. And oh, then I got, I'm like, I you know, st I, the sinus infection stopped, but it didn't make the sort of like cloudiness go away. And so it's like I kind of have been in this point where I almost feel like not like super desperate, but like kind of like, man, like I'll like whatever it takes to figure out how to make this problem go away. And then it's like I'm on an airplane. You know, we were, we were flying a couple weeks ago uh, back from Thanksgiving from family. And I realized on the airplane, like I felt like super like kind of clear, like clear headed. And I was like, oh, my God, like maybe it's like an allergen thing. And maybe like the plane planes are sort of notorious for like their insane air filtration maybe there's like uh, a pressure well, i've got some oil. snake oil to sell you but that's it'll, exactly it'll you and right so i started looking into hepa filters like full house hepa filters and I'm, I'm like oh my god like is this a thing is this like total bs and i could totally wear a see mask. how we're like we're yeah, all the time full now. face respirator for a, for a day or and just see what happens i but then it's like maybe the yeah, wearing, I do like, that. wearing the allergies, respirator might feel like my make you welding feel, respirator does it actually help it actually helps. Like you, instantly, you take it off, I'll start. Because like when we were in Texas, like there was it was really bad. The allergy, whatever was going on in Texas, like destroyed me. Where I just felt like just bad. Like my head was just kind of like cloudy, and it just felt like like I felt dysfunctional. And so it's kind of isn't that crazy? Just like sneeze, like having allergies is so right. much more than just yeah. 
like running out. And I, I genuinely think that a lot of my problems for the past like 10 years probably are just literally allergies. I think like, I don't know. I went and got an allergy test, you know, like a year ago and they just told me like it's mold. You're allergic to some mold. And I'm like, okay, what do I do? You know, we did like the immunotherapy, but like didn't really seem to work. Do one anything. of those mold tests in your house and those are kind of like predatory yeah but it got it got too. worse when we were in texas yeah it's i just it's like, i have no idea anymore so it's like i could totally see that people would just be willing to like buy obscene things to just make the problem go away and then it like none of it helps but what do you know you don't have any proof and the person got your money and like who cares if i ever get some some terminal disease man i would just like ride it out i don't think i could could pay like you know because then i what like i still die right Wait, if you and got then cancer Probably. Like, I might do one <laughs> round of treatment. I don't know, man. It's what? bad. This, see, this is, this uh, is someone... <laughs> this is why we need universal health care. Because someone like Kevin is literally just going to, like, like indirectly kill himself so that he doesn't have to deal with treatments. Well, it's like Sandra's grandpa was just, like... He was in a nursing home for, like, the last couple years of his life. And it, like, cost a ton of money. Like, $15,000 a month. Totally bankrupt. Holy him. shit. You know, bank family has nothing now right wait medicare like, medicare wasn't gonna help i think he it did help for some degree but i don't know yeah it's a lot, There's a lot of money to die yeah maybe kevin's got something here okay uh so then med uh, we have health care for all but the health care consists of just die <laughs> hey that's what we have right now kind of <laughs> here we got this little room for you that you can go die in <laughs> <laughs> i think he was in a nicer nursing home than nor like i don't know i know they're expensive anyway yeah but. um so then it's okay so it's like so why do you think it turns into such like a crazy expense like for me uh i got i had you know a, a, a theorized appendicitis i got a ct scan some just oral medications they did a bunch of blood tests like you know back to like blood culture or whatever uh, and I was in a room for two nights, I think. And it cost, the bill they sent was like $70,000. Okay, and then yep. I think we ended up paying like 2,500 bucks or something. So like the insurance, you could see the negotiation from the insurance brought it down to like 12 and then the insurance paid like eight of it. Or, or maybe it was like they brought it down to 11. I don't remember. And long story short, we paid like a couple thousand dollars. Yep. So like, do you have any thoughts on like how that whole process works? Yeah, that negotiation part, I mean, that's like, basically, it's just all a bunch of like individual deals that these insurance companies make with the health systems, because I mean, depending on like the member base uh, within a state or within a region, that's kind of how it's done. I, I remember there was like a New York Times article that was written uh, maybe earlier this year. But like the problem, like the one th thing with America is that you have to account for like all the different like regional differences. Uh, but meanwhile, it's like, you know, Tylenol in Chicago versus Tylenol in New Jersey. I mean, it shouldn't be $40 no matter where you are, right? For one tablet. So um, it, it just, I don't know, it, it really depends. And so it's like the, the other issue too is that like, I mean, it, it's a pretty big disparity, right? Like if you didn't have the insurance and you were stuck with that $70,000 bill, Kevin. what do you do? Right. It, it's die. not like, you, you, you know, it, it, and you know, they didn't do the surgery. They, they did a scan. You were, you had a, you know, a couple nights stay and then they discharged you. Right. Like it, it wasn't necessarily like, you know, like we can look back on it now and say like, it wasn't that severe of a mm. case. Right. Uh, at the time we had no idea how it was going to evolve. So, it, you know, it could have turned into something really terrible. Um, but you know, relatively mild case and then 70 grand, right. It's right. like, who, who gets that money? Right. Even if you divide it amongst a hundred administrators in the hospital, 70 grand amongst a hundred different people, like they didn't do that. Like, you know, what, $700 worth of work right, or wh whatever. Right. So it, it's like, is, is that math right? I think so. But wh whatever, yeah, whatever the case is, it, it's like, you know, it's like, wh where does that money go? Right. right. And so I, that's a good like, question. If if they gave me a bill for 70 grand and I paid them 70 grand, like they would literally take the money, right? Yeah, they would. Like I if mean, I didn't have insurance and I didn't negotiate at all and they sent me a bill for 70,000 and I like paid it, they would straight up charge me 70. They would like actually take the 70,000. 
Which, which is uh, funny because like on the previous episode, you were talking about taxes, right? Yeah. <laughs> and then you know it, it's like, hey, yeah, you take the seventy grand, but you got to pay taxes on that at the at the corporate level or whatever, right? right? So I I I think with hospitals, there's like a different tax status with it. But yeah, health system administration is really a, a different different animal, um, and sometimes it's like you see these charges or not even the charges, but like just the fact that some people can't even get like, you know, doctor's visits. Like it's just unreasonable. Like some of that stuff right. is just too much. Right. Do you and have like, they do get a doctor visit, but it's not in their, it's not in their network and they have to pay. For yeah. Insurance. Yeah. Or, or it, let, let's just say this, right? Like, like, let's just say you go to the emergency room, they call a kidney doctor because you might have a kidney problem, but the kidney doctor that they called is not, not in your group plan. Oh so God. now you, now you, now your insurance is going to be all screwed over because it's like, well, now you're going to get some crazy high bill because there's a, you know, not in network doctor that was in the chain of care for you. So it's like, now this is all, <laughs> it's all messed up now. Right, and why can I about... only buy insurance one time a year? Like what's up with that? I want to talk to your manager. Yeah, let's, let's okay. Here, how do you, you feel know, about this? What's Kevin, going on with this? Kevin doesn't have health insurance. How does that make you feel? I mean, you're you're young and you look healthy. Uh, I mean, I I can't do a physical exam on you or anything, but you know, it's like I I would say you <laughs> still want something. You still want something, right? I do, but uh, number one, it's kind of just like. I want insurance and then I don't really think about it. I log on to healthcare.gov or whatever. And it's like, oh, I get insurance this time of year. I guess I'll have to remember when that time comes around again. And then it's like, I don't know when that time is. Can I even buy right now? So what would just not, like, like you, could, you could look that up pretty easily. What would happen? Yeah, like there's yeah. like, there's a period of open enrollment. And then even when you're on employer based, let's say I need insurance. coverage immediately. And I want it to last for a year more. What age group? Yeah. I'm under 65. Uh, just, just for me. Do you use tobacco? No. You expect to spend three thousand more. This whole podcast is actually yeah. just uh, an intervention to get Kevin get to finally that. buy health yeah. insurance. Okay, so, <laughs> so what it's right happening? Right now. It's so finally here's, happening. Here's here's it's not even a thought experiment. I feel like this is definitely someone has lived this. So let's say like I I have something wrong with me and I'm like I don't know what it is. I go to the doctor and it's like cancer, and I don't have health okay. insurance and I'm like you know let's say thirty years old. What happens? So that was that was the exact case um that i mentioned in the kidney cancer video so he he finished college in 08 right right when the recession dropped and oh, right. he couldn't get right. a job for for basically forever and so in 2011 is when he had the cancer so i think he was already like 25 by then and and he was like pissing blood and then realized like oh this is like stage four cancer and it's like spread to his lungs Right. And so he like the hospital that he was at, they they did still see him, but like he was not prioritized at all. Like if they had extra time, then, oh, OK, yeah, we'll, we'll check you out. Oh, you have this. Oh, that's interesting. OK, well, uh, come back. Come Holy back in a couple days. Shit. That's yeah, I mean, that's he, yeah, you, that, the situation that people seem to really not understand is like of universal healthcare of like you could totally find yourself you like if you got the shortest stick when you were drawing sticks you know when god held out the cup of sticks and he said pick a stick and you drew the tiny short little baby <laughs> stick and, and he's like all right well i'm gonna give this guy cancer you know that's i guess how it works right um and you go to school you get a degree in something that will be a high paying job. You try to get a job, but the job market's bad. So you can't get a job, which means you probably can't get insurance because you sort of are hoping to get insurance through an employer. Um, and, and it's almost like you did all the things you're supposed to do. But you still don't get the sort of coverage that you need. And then you end up with an ailment like this. You're just screwed. And like, I yeah, remember... And I made a post like either Twitter or something, you know, just like, you know, occasional political thing um, where I suggested something like uh, it was insane. And someone replied about, you know, well, it, it's an incentive to sort of work hard to contribute to society. So it's like you can get a job and this and that. And I think I, I asked them, I was like, well, what if you're going to school? And they're like, well, it's just a risk. Like you literally just have to like shoot your way through life and like kind of shoot the gap of areas where you just if you get sick, you're screwed. 
Yeah. That sort of blows my mind that you could just get unlucky and have done everything you needed to do to get a job to get health insurance and still like, oh, I can't get a job because the economy is screwed. And then you get cancer. And nobody wants to treat you properly. Yeah, the this the even like worst part about it was that they didn't like the the follow up because he was diagnosed with cancer in the in the emergency room, which is like not a good by thing. the by the time that happens like it's just obvious to everyone that you have cancer and it's because like emergency doctors like like i said right your 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 job is to either move patients in further into the hospital or to get them out um but like when they when they do the ct with contrast and they look and they're like okay this is cancer and uh it's probably already spread in like throughout his body like having that diagnosis is like like that's like the last thing that they want to do in right. in the in the ed so what happened was he was referred to a surgeon and the surgeon uh refused to believe that he had cancer which to me like i still don't understand like how, how that worked out well, like he it probably was looks like a chocolate chip cookie in the scan <laughs> Here's the thing, right? So I, I don't even think he looked at the scan. That's the problem, right? So it's like, and not only like, that, but no. like, he insinuated that that the guy had STDs. Did the guy and know like, that he had cancer at that point? Or no, he did. Did he know that he didn't have insurance at that point? Sorry. Yeah, he did. So, it, man, why do the doctors even know if you have insurance oh, yeah. or not? I just, I was just sick, and I went to the uh urgent care and they said well you know they did some like they did a blood test they did a pee test or something to see if it was if the like pee was bacteria coming out or something <laughs> yeah if it wasn't bloody or something i don't know man and they're like well i see you don't have insurance i mean you could also do like an influenza test and a covid test and i'm like no, i want to know what's wrong with me just test, me, not a stool sample give me the test Kevin's like that is a year so it's like <laughs> they were like thinking in their head that they weren't going to give me tests based just because i didn't have insurance yeah well, yeah, I mean, when you schedule the when you schedule the the outpatient visit, you have to usually tell the receptionist like, "Hey, we got." Kevin just oh, died. Did, did Kevin cut out? Kevin died. Uh, I oh my my that, my oh. camera battery died. Uh, oh. Okay, I have forty nine minutes to <laughs> still left on my card. Oh well, we should. Uh, I feel like what do we? Oh God, an hour and fifty minutes. Yeah, Jesus well, Christ. yeah, we, we're well. There's a lot of free medical this. advice we've gotten. How much do we owe you? <laughs> yeah, doctor? so. I, I mean, with with, with him, he thousand uh, dollars. <laughs> well, so with with him, um, so he he ended up. Uh, so basically, they this it was like the the story. Like when I heard about it, I'm just like, this is really it. It's remarkable that the person is is alive because of his own sheer will. Like the the surgeon just wasn't having it. I mean, accused the dude of having STDs, and it's like how do you even come to that conclusion right and so um basically the and then it, it, like he refused to say that this guy had cancer and so basically when the guy said i've had this cough and it won't go away the doctor said oh you know what that's hiv right that's the pneumonia that you get from oh hiv so i'm sending you back to the hospital and they'll check you out and they'll take care of you you know i don't need to do this so so they they sent him over to the um to internal medicine so he's admitted into the hospital they did the chest CT and they looked at it and they're like, no, that's that's not HIV pneumonia. Like that's cancer that's in his lungs. And so like then finally he went back to the surgeon and the surgeon was like, yeah, we, we can do we can do surgery if you want. And ironically, out of all kidney cancers, this is the one where you don't do surgery first. Like you do chemotherapy first for some odd reason. If you do surgery first, like your your chances of dying from the cancer are higher than if you got chemotherapy first. So even the, even the surgeon saying surgery was like also not the right thing either. So the, the guy ended up emailing somebody in Texas that he found on like a patient forum. Like he kept seeing this person's name like co keep coming up. So he looked him up and like, at, it was like what Saturday at like, like it was like I, some like really late night time. And he was like, you know what? Like, I, either I'm gonna die or I'm gonna die. Like, I, I don't know what's gonna happen. So, like, I'm just, I'll just send the email. If he doesn't respond, it's not like it's any different than what the surgeon's telling me, anyways. So he emailed, and within like five minutes, he got a response back. The guy from Texas said, "Don't worry, um, I'll see you in the clinic when I come back." And that was that was it. Like when he he drove to Texas with his family. And they were able to actually get an override of insurance for
for him to be able to get the care in oh Texas. My God. That that is insane that that's even a problem. Where it's like, here's this guy who can solve the problem, but it's like, ah, oh, I got some bad news. Us, your insurance provider, he's not on this I, list. I, we have a list, and the guy's not on there. So you just have to. Here's the. But the good news is we got a room over there that you can go yeah, die. Yeah, you can die. <laughs> that's free. Yeah, I, I mean, so, so like that covered. that case had like it, it, it had so many layers to it because it wasn't just the insurance. It was also like just the reluctance of the surgeon to look right. any further. And I I don't even know if that was necessarily uh, because of the insurance or not. I mean, it's like that was just a very simple like, hey, yeah, you have cancer. Like, that's all yeah. they needed. Like, yeah, you have like cancer. a bad doctor all or something. But that guy ended up surviving. Yeah. So he's one of the like few documented survivors of this cancer because it afflicts young people. Right. So it's like it's it's one of the few kidney cancers that affects young people. Uh, it affects a lot of people because it's it's anyone who has sickle cell. Right. And uh, it could be sickle cell disease or sickle cell trait. So we know all throughout the Mediterranean, there's beta thalassemia, which is a sickle cell. There's people from uh, South America and Africa and also parts of Asia. Right. Just anyone from the equator where there's a lot of mosquitoes and malaria, um, sickle cell happens out there. So it's like, you know, this this affecting like hundreds of millions of people. And so <laughs> the fact that we that it was originally said it was rare. Well, it's coming out that it's not as rare as we thought it was. And, you know, it's like, you know, then they said surgery first. And it's like, well, no, that like we have data to show like that's not what you need to do first. The guy in Texas was the one who published that data. So it's like, you know, doing stuff like that is just, it, it had so many layers to it. And it like, it didn't just stop at the insurance because we could have had universal health care and that dude still may have gotten the wrong care, right? So it's right. like, there's just so many layers to it. What do you think the, the right way, like a, a potentially better way to sort of structure how this stuff works with like, like the insurance, not having to do insurance override where it's just sort of. Like, I mean, I don't want to say universal health care because people are going to be like, well, I, I mean, what do you think is like a way that could work better? I don't know. I just know. don't want a physical body anymore. After hearing all of this, I'm really <laughs> over it. Point. I'm really done with just all of this. Upload like, me. Just, I don't. Yeah. Put me in the I, matrix, I, baby. Upload me to the cloud. Yeah, I don't want I want to live in the metaverse. Dude, with, with, yeah. <laughs> with a bunch of <laughs> NFTs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be an NFT doc. How can I get the surgery to convert yeah. myself? To I want to stuff your brain out. Yeah. How do I become an NFT? <laughs> <laughs> NFTs don't get cancer or brain worms or whatever the hell it is. Do you, do you think how much do you think healthcare would become worse if it was sort of like, you know, the government was the insurance provider, like a single player? I, you know, I don't, worse is kind of hard to say. Uh, it would, it would introduce its own set of problems. Yeah. So like, I mean, obviously the system we have, like we, we know it has big problems. Right. I feel like, like doing, doing it that way would introduce a different set of problems. It wouldn't be like the, the cure-all that we're thinking of. Do you think it's uh, worse because... problems though? Or do you think it would like be equivalent? That's a good question. I don't know. Right, because it's like the the other part of it too is that like you know we don't have price caps on medicines here, right? Uh, and then New Zealand's the only other country in the world that that doesn't have price caps, but like everyone else does. And so like if if everyone had price caps in the extreme case, right? Like what happens to all of that stuff? I don't know, right? There I, there isn't a good answer. So it's just the 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 like we have the problem that we have. Uh, but it would introduce a, a different set of problems going the other way. Right. Um, and I, I don't like I don't know what the good answer is, because like I said, I mean, money and medicine are just wholly incompatible. Like right. like it's, you know, a rich priest and a rich doctor. You don't see them the same way as you see a rich tech guy. Mm -hmm. Right. Because the, the tech guy has done something that's, you know, he, he's made something that's different. Right. A uh, tech guy or girl. Right. So it's like. It, they've done something different, but when you see a rich priest, when you see a rich doctor, right. you get the notion that Unethical. that they've uh, right that they've played on people's fear of divine retribution or played on people's fear of death, and that's how they're able to uh, you know acquire right. the wealth that they've gotten. That that's the notion. I mean, obviously that that's not true in a lot of cases, but it's like it, it's that that's why it's just a little bit different. Yeah, that's that's kind of like just a nightmare in general like the whole medical money thing where it's like 
they shouldn't like you should it should just be medical and then how do we pay for it but instead it somehow has turned into sort of like a business yeah because because really i mean get, getting paid for your work i mean that, that's like a that that's a must right? right i mean it's like you can't just you can't work for free all the time right. sometimes you can but not all the time and, and so it's like expensive especially medical grade shit like you can't just have you know final tubing you bought at lowe's i mean you could but <laughs> you know yeah. like that only goes so far until you start having problems I mean, you know, like a one liter bag of saline, um, like maybe about 11, 12 years ago, I saw the the like wholesale price of those that they purchased and it was like $1,100 a bag. That's bad And I'm shit. just like, yeah, like it's, it was like, it, cause it, it's the ones that are made, uh, they're made in Deerfield, Illinois. And it, it's like, it, you know, you have to have the, the GMP, USP, like all, all these other things like coming in with the certification. And yeah, a one liter bag of saline was like $1,100 and they would buy them in these boxes. And it was like, so you're telling me that this box was like $20,000? Salt water box is like, salt yeah. water box. Can you imagine yeah, you like picking up a forklift, out, right? but you like skewer the box and you just like destroy <laughs> 10 grand worth of salt water. I, I was buying oxygen gas. Have you ever been gas? to Six Flags Great America? Yeah, in, in, in Illinois, Gurney, right? Gurney, Illinois. Gurney, yeah, Illinois, there. yeah. yeah. I grew up right by there. I worked there. That was my first job. I was, really? Was I it was really? A janitor at Six Flags I would go there all the time. America. Yeah. I but you've like been I, to Six was... Flags in America? Yeah, so what's up with the Eagle one called? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's like yeah, a wooden eagle. Eagle. Yeah, wooden one. Yeah, yeah. Rickety, Evan, you have, and then you there was like I feel a left out. ride that would like give a concussion. <laughs> Well, I used to live in, there's, there's, there's a neighborhood there across the street from that called Pembroke. I used to live in that neighborhood. Were you? Like, it was wild. Oh, yeah. did you tell us a story about you You ate a pizza that someone didn't eat? You, like, took their customer's yeah, pizza and, like, yeah, hid behind the was, building and ate it? Yeah, because, so, they, they had the family-sized pizza was just, <laughs> like, a large pizza, right? And it was $40. And that was back in, like, 2006 or 2000, whenever I was working there. So, like, I don't, I don't even know how much it costs now. But, like, there was, a, there was, like, not even, it was, like, two people. They sit down, and I swear to God, they ate, like, one slice. They made maybe, like, two slices. And they got up and they left. And so, me being the janitor, it's my job to throw this out to clear the table. So, you opened so the trash the can. Ah, uh, he's a the up, trash can. <laughs> <laughs> I picked up the box. And I was, I was like, this is this is a forty dollar pizza. It's basically an entire pizza. And so instead of throwing it out, I went behind the. I like made out like I was throwing it out, but I actually went behind the dumpster and then I ate the pizza for lunch. What if like someone sneezed on it and that's why they didn't eat it? Like they opened no the box. Way. and they <laughs> There, if I sneeze on a pizza, I'm eating it still, right? Like they're they're not li abandoning just because somebody sneezed on it. This I will say Alan's I used to work. Party. I I worked at a restaurant as my first job, washing dishes, and like we definitely ate some of the leftover steak. Yes. Yeah. Yes. You see. I, I, yes. I'm just making funny. We did that too. I worked at the Thai restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> the two guys in the back would just like from people's plates. Well, it depends. It just sort of depends on how. Oh yeah, if they like if they sent it back, right? It's fine. Well, if or, it kind of well, came back and it's like clearly like not hasn't really had like hands in it or like torn apart or something, if it sort of looks like whole, like it was, you know, like a slice yeah. of pizza missing, you know. Yeah, I guess. yeah. What are the odds I, that you die? I worked at a grocery store. Pizza? I would raid the trash can Bro. too. Oh my God, a real human raccoon. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, thank you <laughs> to um, uh, the opposite of, of Medicare for all. Wait, what the hell do we call it? A single player? What do we you call should, it? You should pretend like universal you're going to healthcare. Healthcare. Yeah. And then What's the opposite of healthcare? American healthcare system. Every man for himself. Uh, we, want, we want to thank Kaiser Permanente for sponsoring this video. Remember that universal healthcare is bad uh, and that you should vote no against it because Kaiser Permanente will give you all the healthcare you need, including $40. That's him saying this, not me. I, I said nothing about it. <laughs> <laughs> This video was sponsored by nope. God. God will take care of your ailments. You don't need to go to the hospital. Uh, my oh, sponsor wait. was no. was Stigna Pro. This for video me was sponsored by options for insurance. This right video now. was sponsored by Snake Oil. Come, come on down to <laughs> Snake Oil and buy all uh, of your Snake Oil. Any, what about getting anyone? this back? I don't even know Guys, at if, this point what you can keep and what you have to get. <laughs> share this, this video. video share this video was sponsored by Hepatitis C. You should get Hepatitis C. It's good for you. You'll enjoy Hepatitis C.
Anyone you want to thank? <laughs>